Wow. You ever seen a grown man naked? There's going to be train wrecks there. every day in this program because we take massive chances on a daily basis. Oh, absolutely. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony program. The ONA virus spreading across America thanks to XM Satellite Radio. Right you are. You're listening to the pioneers of satellite radio. You're listening to two guys that don't have nose jobs. You're listening to two no, guys that are know, smart enough not to have daughters. <laughs> You're listening to two guys. Did you have lipo un- under your chin? No, not yet. No? Hoo hoo. Nah, I'm all good. I don't think I would do that plastic surgery thing. No. A lot of radio guys end up doing the plastic surgery thing, which is really strange to me because you're on the radio. If I was gonna, I would have years ago. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but thank you, my fucking Sicilian father, for this schnoz. And, uh, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I can almost see it if you're doing, like, a TV thing. Yeah. And you want your career to go on maybe a little longer. Yeah. And you're not going to get into, like, the Joan Rivers uh, area of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. I, I get it to a point. But if you do a radio show, why are you getting plastic surgery? That's, uh... Unless you're some fucking narcissistic egomaniac. I think it's it comes down to no matter how successful you are, uh, you're just not happy with yourself. You two got to stay cute. Aww. I'm going to try. That's your thing. I'm going to try to stay cute. You can't. You should. You should be the legitimately cute radio guys that aren't these uh, kind of good-looking dudes that try to be good-looking or, or just ultra horribly ugly motherfuckers. You should a new genre, really cute motherfuckers. Well, we're two thin guys. Yeah, That's that very is rare in radio. That is very rare. We are a rare find in radio because we are thin guys. That's right. Everyone in radio is uh, overweight to some capacity. So well, they yeah. sit down and do nothing, but. Yeah. You got rollerblader, you got fucking 52 <laughs> colonoscopy man over here that got to stay uh, alive. <laughs> just eat bagel <laughs> and one meal when I get home the of bagel broccoli boy. and That's a new piece shit. of fuck, chicken. Fuck oh, and they bag the bagel boy. Shut up, dude. You want to eat like me today. I want to eat like me I was in the day. office and Ben calls and goes, hey, uh, it, well, Ben gets a hold of me and goes, hey, Patrice is on the line. He wants to eat like you. What kind of cereal do you eat? I know you get Goline and Kashi, but it's like I didn't I didn't want to push it. By no, the Norton's the Kashi guy. Norton's on the line, by the way. Jimmy. Hey, Jim. Maybe he's not on the line. It doesn't sound like the phone is even down. I got it. I got it. I got it down on my end. Jimmy. Hi, old hi, Ed. There he is. Wait, wait. Eric uh, was pointing at something. Program wasn't on. Oh, that wasn't on today. Uh. All right. We're all fixed. Yeah, we're all How's our fixed. little lamb? I'm good. I'm going to have some uh, some neck lipo while I'm out here in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, you're going to do that? I could see you doing something like that. I yeah. actually could, too. My the God, HBO God. show hits, like, gets picked up again. It gets a buzz about it. Jimmy will be the first one running in. What do I do about this neck? Dude, you got to suck the fat that. out. I, I saw How do you make a chin with that plastic shit? <laughs> I, I, look, I look like a fucking bullfrog. I just can't do anything about my fat neck, and it's really depressing. It's really, I mean, I'm, there's nothing about me that's particularly good-looking and TV-ish, but, I mean, that is really unsightly, and there's just nothing I can do to get rid of it. I don't think they have a procedure for that. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't. It's called a shotgun. <laughs> you gotta be, you got to be comfy in your own skin, Jimmy. I know, I know. Uh, how's your chest, little sweetie? You feeling okay? I'm uh, ten days into the stupid flu. I'm, I'm much better. I'm, I'm good enough to broadcast, but it was a bad week last week. Yeah, no, it was worse for me. Cause I, how many instant messages can you get that go, hey, did you give old AIDS? LOL. Uh-huh. Oh, I know. Well, how about this one? We find out that one of our interns was walking around here with uh, mono. Uh, which one? Uh, I guess... Uh, Emilio. 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 Ew, which one's that? I don't even know. They say they rattle off their names, and I'm like, I can't even conjure up an image in my mind of what Emilio looked like. That wasn't the big one, the big sweet boy, was it, uh, with the big... No, Than just put his hat on sideways as a, a, a little I know helpful hint was. of who it was. He, he had, like, fucking Armand DeSante hair. Yeah, I know exactly who he was. He, he did look sickly all the time, and it turns out he was here with mono. It's, like, great. Good, that, thank you. Oh, huh? Is that contagious, like, without touching? C- is that contagious? <laughs> is Ebola contagious? <laughs> that is, like, the most contagious thing. Yeah, mono I, is pretty contagious, but they say you can only get it through saliva. 
Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. He was only handling our food and yeah, coffee. Yeah, he was I mean, licking, the licking the rim of everyone's coffee cups and putting them back. <laughs> no, what did we say yesterday? He was sucking on the yes. the Starbucks coffee nozzle. <laughs> yeah, he was just <laughs> shoving it in his mouth and hitting espresso. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, really fast, I just got an instant feedback from Fast Freddy in Jamaica Station. Rich Voss is about to be on 100.7. Carlson and McKenzie in Boston. Please oh. have a Boston listener eavesdrop on Rich We Boss. need our Boston listeners right now to uh, give us a call, tune in that station, and uh, we want to listen to Rich Voss on an interview. Why is it a bad show? I don't know. No, we just, uh, you know this, Jimmy. We love, okay. When he goes around America, we like to We follow Rich and we uh, fuck call up him his and interviews and stuff. <laughs> the best is calling him and hearing his phone ring <laughs> while he's on the interview and he goes, all right. And then he gets all nervous because he knows who it is, but he can't, like, he doesn't want to mention it because he doesn't want to blow up his spot. Yeah, it's great. And we it's just get him, we put him in a horrendous situation. And he's afraid if he doesn't pick up the phone that, that you guys will be mad at him. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. Fucking um, uh, uh, it's another radio show. Oh, um. And then he calls all of us and leaves messages after the show. Yeah. Yeah, on the way out. Like, I wish I would have known it was you. I would have picked up. We would have laughed. So yeah, exactly. Fucking, you know. I always support you guys. I got my parents coming out today and my sister. What, to see a taping? Yeah, I forgot to get them Christmas gifts. Like a fucking idiot. I'm like, ah, fuck, bring you out to L.A. Like, that was what I meant to do. Right. So I just forgot to shop for anybody. So I <laughs> so saved myself three days before I got gifts. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you got to put them up in a hotel and all that? Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I have nothing to do with them. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what to, what do you do with your family? I mean, they go to Universal one day, and I'm fucking doomed. I have no idea where to take my parents. How long are they going to be out there for? Until Sunday morning. I mean, Holy crap. Three nights. Send them to all the little attractions. What? You're... Hey, Dad, you want to get blown on Santa Monica Boulevard? What and are we supposed to do? And your dad would say yes? Uh, hopefully, yeah. You go to Universal. So, Father Sunday. And you go yeah. to Disneyland. And he'd point at me and go, get started. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, Jimmy, we talked about the Ellen DeGeneres thing. Oh, uh, yeah, she, how she, how she uh, said no. Yeah, it was pretty funny, actually. Yeah, and how how much of a pussy you are now that you've gone Hollywood. No, 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 why? why? I was going to... No, we were just talking, and not so much about that instance, but just because uh, we've, we've done a couple of things on the air here this week that have made some people that have sat in a little uncomfortable talking about certain radio personalities and... Uh, other people that didn't want to get involved in the bashing, things like that. And then we were kind of just going around on how uh, some people don't want to burn bridges and other right. people just, you know, go over bridges with uh, gasoline cans and, and matches. Right. And uh, you are one of those guys that will not burn a bridge. What? I mean, what, it, when, you, when you compare me to fucking Wrecking Ball O'Neill that you have in the studio <laughs> today, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> He's told us a few of his stories. They're great. The funniest thing I, I think I ever saw Patrice do it was to a William Morris agent. Did you tell him that? No. This is the original, uh, the original uh, Colin Quinn show on NBC. And uh -huh. There was like 15 of us in the lobby waiting for the show to start, and this big agent William Morris comes in, and he's really nervous, and he goes to Patrice, "Hey, uh, hey, man, are you on the show tonight?" And Patrice just humiliates him. And he goes, uh, no, I'm just out here uh, in the lobby watching the show, you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> William Morris Agency. Really, really embarrassing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that isn't somebody that might have been able to help you out. You know whose face I wanted to spin in last night? Fucking David Spade. I was in, uh, I had a spot at the improv, and uh, it was the last three acts were supposed to be me, and then him, and then Drew Carey and his all star improv show. So fucking Spade comes in. And he knows I'm doing a 10-minute spot, and he still bumps me and goes ahead of me like a fucking douche. I was so fucking angry. I wish I would have the courage to say it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so aggravated. I just pulled Todd Barry out of the fucking hallway. Out. One of these days, out. Jimmy. <laughs> That's really One funny. of these days, it all comes around. Uh, yeah, I know, but that was really annoying. And uh, I, I was really glad I just didn't open my mouth. And If I would have said something really vicious to Ellen, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that, you know, XM would have been kind of pissed at me. Yeah, hold, hold on one second. Uh, we might have Voss on the Ooh. air. Jay? Yep. Uh, they're in commercials? Yeah, still in commercials. Of course they are. Have we ever gone to a phone requesting another radio show on free radio 
and them not been in commercials where the guy goes, yeah, I, I'm on, and here they are. Right. It's always, no, they're in uh, commercials. Yeah, we give commercial radio a chance all the time, and every time we plunk down their little station, they're in commercials. In commercials. Yeah. Hey, I heard, hey, I, heard I was giving you a bad mouthing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, hey, Jay, uh, as soon as Rich Voss is on, just uh, get it on, you know, turn up the radio and, and throw your phone next to him. We're going to just keep you in the background, so stay quiet, all right? All uh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jimmy. Well, some guy was doing, uh, trying to be cute in FMQB. They were doing um, slogans. For for commercial radio, all of them hysterically funny, absolutely <laughs> awful. And, and this guy Dave Rossi from WAVF, he wrote uh, this slogan. This is what his slogan uh, would be for commercial radio to get you to listen to commercial radio over satellite. Hey, did you hear what Opie and Anthony did on the radio today? Nobody did. Satellite radio, it's awesome. <laughs> wow. Well. That's great. See, get it? Because um, we're here on satellite, and apparently we have no listeners. So. Well, you know, that's the type of guy he is. If he feels he needs to make fun of somebody else to bring himself up, I mean, that's that's up to him. I don't think we need to do that kind of humor. <laughs> no. no. So, Mean-spirited. So, so yesterday we did but a little... Guys, the show's on, but uh, our boss is on right now. All right, just keep it in the background then, right. and do what right. I told you to do, and uh, everyone would be very happy. Oh, uh, you just got a talking down, uh, too. Dave, so we did some research on Dave Rossi yesterday, Jimmy, and we found out he's like, just a midday jock that just plays a lot of music and and pretty much does nothing on his own show. And he's only heard in, uh, what, Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. We wanted to listen to a little bit of him yesterday, and the midday shift starts at uh, 10 a.m. So uh, we, we had it up in the background at 10 a.m. He didn't come on until, I guess, I think 1040? 1045. 45 minutes of his boss telling him, for the first 45 minutes... Don't utter a word. <laughs> Wait, uh, you're, shut your face. Yeah, you're so good and so talented that I don't want you to even breathe on Mike for 45 minutes. We I, and we trashed him pretty good, and you know our past. I'm sure they got a hold of the everyone that works at the damn station down there. And he finally got on the air, and I'm convinced that we got to him because you can hear the nervousness in his voice. Yeah, on his first break, he knew we were li we were listening in. We didn't play this yesterday because we ran out of show, but we we uh, recorded it. So listen to this real fast. It's only like 40 seconds. This is Dave Rossi being real brave. 96 Wave, Billy Pilgrim with Insomniac. That's a Wave classic off your self-titled CD from back in 1994. Uh, let's see here. I got some tickets to give away. Now, a uh, couple things happening at the Windjammer this weekend. It is, uh, it's, uh, we're, we're going to the beach. We're going to be hanging out at the beach right there on the uh, uh, front beach on the Isle of Palms on Friday and Saturday night. Now, Saturday night we're doing the, uh, what is it, Your Mama's Big Fat Booty Band is playing. Critical will be out there broadcasting live. Friday night as well, uh, the occasional milkshake. That's Mark Bryan's band from Hooting the Blowfish's side project with uh, Hank and the Blue Dogs. Good band. And we've got tickets to give away for both of those events. So if you want to win, hang on. I'm going to give them away here in just a few moments. Also, another big set of 96 Wave Music. Gotta wanna need to get a have There it is. That was his break yesterday. Uh, Jesus, that's a heck of a show. How we don't have to go to war with him. Uh, 96 <laughs> Wave. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he. Uh, I think. I guess. Some I think people called him up and told him we were like had him on the air and we, yeah. we were listening and he definitely was a little flustered. There are so many guys in America that sound exactly like that when they do their show. Uh, yeah. well, I, I resent the fact that you think that I don't burn bridges. I mean, I, I, that's not true. I'll say anything. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll burn the Pauly Shore Bridge. <laughs> no, I never burned Bridge of Pauly. If you're listening, I like him. Faggot. <laughs> 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 so what happened with Ellen? Um, uh, first of all, she looks a lot older in person. I was really happy. She was, she's 55 in person. Wow. And I uh, went to get a shot with her because she walked by with a big camera crew. And, uh, she stopped. There was a big crowd around her, and I, I shook her hand. And I knew she didn't know who I was. So I just said, hey, you know, I'm a comic, and uh, you might as well get a quick shot with you. And she goes, no, no, I can't. I'm, and she just walked away. Whew. That's, that's, that's a rough one, Jimmy. And, and to Jimmy... That is a slap in the face like no other. From another comic, I've never said no. But then again, she did have a big crew with her. But I was fucking. I would. I, if I could have bit her and got away with it legally, I would have just. I would have bit her face. I was that angry. Now, I Jimmy, was, was she taping something at that moment, or was a crew following her to tape something somewhere else at the CES? Like, because that might have been a little weird if she was taping a segment for something and you come in and. Ask for an autograph. Oh no, no dude! She was talking to Gary Hahn a minute before, so, like you know, in, in, in just chatting. Okay, so a little XM business was going on. So there's your tie-in right there, also. 
Well, yeah, exactly. Well, he didn't know. I mean, it wasn't like he, he could have introduced me. She was, he just kind of stopped talking to her, and then I stuck my stupid hand out. I think you should have gone with the I'm on Channel 202 here at XM Satellite Radio. Could I get a picture instead of I'm a comic? Well, you know why? It was so hectic, and I, I didn't even know she would know what that was. She was so. She wouldn't like, know what that was. She's there. She's on, and she draws a paycheck from this company. You could have used. You, in you should have wielded your XM power and not your comic powers. Uh, either way, she should have taken the picture, and she didn't, because she had a bunch of fat house frows following her, and she was afraid that probably if she took one, she'd have to take more. Well, at yeah. least, at least you handled it like an adult, um, didn't yell, scream, and throw a temper tantrum akin to a five-year-old that we no, all heard about. Yeah, no, I was fine. I mean, I, I handled it with dignity. You know, Dignity. <laughs> you, I'm surprised you can say that word. You know, I was three seconds away from just crying on the floor at CES. Like a I saw it in your baby. face. I saw it in your face. You were ready to cry. Nobody really thinks he's a, a list celebrity like a list. He's not even in, in the alphabet listed. Like he's a he's a D or E list celebrity, and he, and he has this attitude like, how dare you? No, it's like how dare she walk by while I never. You yeah. fucking idiot. No one should take a picture with you. That's not true. She should have. Uh, no, I I know I'm a nobody because I had to say I'm a comic. I didn't I didn't shake her hand and go Ellen and then you know expect her to go Jimbo. I mean I know. <laughs> I know. No, unless you saw a tough crowd a couple times, she has no idea who I am. But as, as a comedian, she should have taken the photo. Yeah. She just didn't. Jimmy so. sees the pictures of his celebrity friends, with all of them that he has, and he's got a shitload. He sees that as him having had some type of relationship with that person. Yes. A, more, more of a personal, hey, how you doing? Like, now we know each other than just... Take a picture with a I celebrity. told him to stop. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes I look at that. I go to Jim's house from time to, you know, back when he used to live the other place. Yeah. And I look at the pictures and I go, wow, I should have like a chronicle of my yeah. career. But I'm like, eh. Because Jim never looks like more more famous than anybody in the pictures he took. Like, if you don't know Jim, yeah. you look at the pictures and he always looks like the motherfucker that took the picture with them. <laughs> no one ever looks like they took a picture with Jim. I'm going to break in really <laughs> fast here because we're going to miss Boss. Kim in Boston, oh. what's up? Boss is on, and he's talking about beating the, one of the let's radio hear it. DJs. All right, let's put it. Just put your phone near the radio. Yeah, please, Kim. Help us out. Are you still, uh, you still dating the hot girlfriend or not? We got married. Congratulations, great lady. It's just me and her. Not her. Oh. Yeah, we got married in September. Okay. And, uh, Are you still touring together? She's calling him. Yeah, just this week she's not working with me. Mm -hmm. you know, we were last week we were working uh, in Poughkeepsie, matter of fact, and we're leaving and, we're, and we this is we, we we stopped to go to uh, get coffee, and she walked in to get the coffee and I walked in to pay for gas. Bringing. And she thought I was standing next to her. And she closes her eyes and leans her head oh my on this guy and starts singing on top of the world. <laughs> With her eyes closed on this complete stranger show. If it goes to voicemail, call him again and again and again. I think we heard where it started ringing. He kind of paused. She picked on top of the world and he looked at her, you know. I told him, I said, you got to take care of him now. I mean, you don't just lay your head on some stranger's shoulder without, you know, you know, full release. You know what I'm saying? I'll get the coffee. You take care of the stranger. That's how I roll. She was 42. Uh, she has a very funny girl. I still use her line, by the way. Mm -hmm. we, when we went to, her, went to your show, she has a line where uh -oh. she walks into a room and, she, and someone asks why, what's that smell? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Now they make me do that wherever we are, and I have to scream it. <laughs> Those are my privates. She did that line probably a hundred times that whole week after yep, we went. Yeah, I can't wait to take her to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> they have a hole on this show. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> funny, man. We, we appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, I love it. I'm glad you had me. This is great. Uh, I, I, I've already told this story, but I'll tell it again. How she almost killed me on the honeymoon. You know, it's not. It's not. You know, it's. It's been told, but... Oh, God, she had a period, and of course it's been toys. told. Upstairs and, you know, full around. It's kind of period. It was my time of the month. So what's the one? So I, I swam away from her because I'm thinking, hey, if she wants to attract... You want to buy a tampon <laughs> string? I'm walking around Hawaii with one arm like a surfer. You know what I'm saying? I can't even surf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Yeah, she has an HBO special out now. That's nice. Yeah, she's doing good, and... Uh, 
We had a pilot last year. Did you get an HBO? It's phone? not even rich anymore. No. Please. It's got it. oh, every man. time. It's every time you listen to him, it's, it's just deflating. Rich and Bonnie. It's deflating, man. Like Stiller and Mira. It's I, still, like, I still love Walsh, but almost just like on a tap him on the top of the head kind of way. Like, yeah. you, you, you always have a place in my heart. Man. <laughs> 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 Fucking loser. I've been using I've been on more vacations from that gift basket. It's unbelievable the stuff they give. And you know these celebrities aren't using half of them. You know, because they're... Yeah, right. everyone's yeah, trying to call them. We've used... Yeah. Every, I think we turned his phone off. Every skin cream from a rapper. <laughs> <Marvel. laughs> I think every... You go to these resorts, and you know, you feel like... Hey, look at when we went to Hawaii for our honeymoon... Oh, we, we the honey... He can't just night, talk about himself eight, or just... Four. I wouldn't pay eighteen hundred. He's the guy now that has to talk about his wife <laughs> everywhere he goes. Uh, all from the basket, all from the gift basket. The tips are outrageous. I mean, he's got you know, this was a scam. We were at one place. Do you think Bonnie goes out and just every water. word out of her mouth is uh, about rich? He, no, turn, right. he turned his phone off. He turned his phone off. Yeah, his phone. He's on to us finally. Yeah. yeah. Another guy comes along the path. Bastard ruined call. our bit. Him. I tipped my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I tipped the gas station. I tipped everybody. So, I uh. Uh, so then when you take a cruise, you take a cruise, you pull up. They, they, they want to tip for taking the luggage out of your car, and then the luggage to load it, and then the tip to, to load it up. It's, it really is ridiculous. Now you, want to hear you better tip those fucking cruise guys when they take your bags. You want your bags in your fucking room? You tip those guys. Uh, is it more cruise and sure, the cruise? Uh, me and Barney, uh, we had this wonderful stateroom, and I said, Barney, uh, he's so defanged. Oh, isn't he? He's just, a, he's just so, he's, he's PG-13 now. He did do that remote from the movie theater. He said, did you see this? I got to go, guys. All right, Kim. commercial. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, all right, there's a little taste of Voss doing some radio in Boston today. Hey, so I listened to a fucking Newhart album. You know, I'm my <laughs> wife. <laughs> Norton, what the fuck? Man, you, you talk to Voss more than any of us. What the fuck is happening? Is it like, why does he think love has to do this to a person? I, I don't know. He's just, he's just a fucking frightened man. I think one day he's going to realize, she's going to wake up and realize like, that she married and nothing. He just has to fucking keep talking about her. So he has to just keep talking about her so to remind her that they're married, lest she forget and just leave one day or not come home? Yeah, I think that's what it is. I mean, his boss has never had any kind of self-esteem or he's never gotten, you know, which he probably shouldn't. He is going to fall into a chasm when she leaves him. She's gone. He it's just, you know to it's going to happen, man. Crack, gambling, drinking. It's all going to come back. It's all got to come back. I must have got to fill this <laughs> void in my soul. <laughs> I got to. <'em. laughs> Porcelain teeth falling out. He'll be back. At, those teeth will be smacked out of his head by some black crack dealer one day as they just take his money and give him a piece of soap. I'll be at a rest stop. Voss? It's cold, it's cold out here. here. <laughs> it's cold out here. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, did you hear that story from Patrice? Oh, oh, what? Oh, give uh, give Jimmy the story really fast. I did. I was I was driving. And I, I was tired. I had to stop at a rest stop, and I uh, went to sleep. And this fucking white guy knocked on. You know, comes up to my window, and I'm like, "What's up?" He goes, "It's cold out here." I go, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Look at Norris like ah memories. <laughs> he's like he's like it's cold out, and then he pulls my door handle, and I go, "Well, we'll go inside." <laughs> Clueless. <laughs> Clueless that he's a sissy. Advice while he was trying to suck you. Put on some mittens. No, a hat. Most heat is lost through the top of the head, sir. <laughs> a hat would help you. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a pickup. I really did. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. It's cold out here. Patrice is trying to tell him to go into McDonald's. Oh, go on. Oh, oh, oh. dude. <laughs> He's looking outside his window. He's trying to have like a barometric pressure discussion. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go up, you're going to get sick. This is the flu season. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then the guy drove away with a Christmas tree on top, on top of his car. car. <laughs> Subaru Outback with a Christmas tree on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope it was that fucking disease-ridden intern, that cock stuck where he got everybody sick. Who knows? Oh. Damn. Jimmy, the HBO thing's going well, huh? Yeah, man. Um, I gotta go to bed, because I, I, I kind of took a nap and then woke up and I have to go back to bed. But it's going great, man. We got one more to do after. We have two more. One more we tape tomorrow, and then uh, you know, I'm back. So That is unbelievable. How many yeah. episodes did you tape already? This will be number uh, 12. 
12 episodes. Yeah, and they picked it up for, like, more, right? Well, they want to do they want to do 21 total, but we have to wait to see if it's popular or not before they pay for eight more. So When's it what? coming? Oh. Uh, June, it looks like. Oh, so. shit. Jimmy's about to get a, be a fucking a, a celebrity yeah, celebrity. Jimmy's about to blow up. Hobnobber. I, I just saw the uh, Louis C.K. Uh, HBO special, too, last night. Very funny. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. He's really funny. and uh, He yeah. hitched himself to a winner, I think. Mr. Yeah. Fucking Coattail Rider. Norton. I know. I always know. I always kind of know who's, who's fucking, who's t ready to take off. I just kind of jump on him. <laughs> right on there. Ride him, cowboy. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> he rode that O&A train to oh, the fucking, it. went off the, the track. The second that derailed, he jumped off on the Colin Quinn Express. It was, it was, it was, you know what it was like? What was the movie about that demon that would, like, just touch you and all of a sudden he's inside of you? Oh, Fallen. That's yeah. exactly what it was. That's like. what Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy's Fallen. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> and it was easy for him to dump you for, for Colin because you was off the air at the time. But yeah. now it's like, oh, she wants to really dump you for HBO. Yeah. But he's not sure. As soon as he gets the, as soon as they get the ratings, the fall quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Louis C.K. Yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy, you're getting more dialogue uh, as you go along here too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got a few scenes this week. I mean, I got actually three this week, and we're shooting some really weird cold open. Um, it's going good so far. I'm very happy. And uh, well, you know, the crowd good. reaction is has been great, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, people seem to like it. Although we don't like a lot of fucking weird, like rehab people that come because the first season, so we have people have no idea what the show is. So there's no fans of the show. So it's all like, uh, you know, just like people that they take from rehab. That's how they get audiences into these uh, shows. Um, they'll get these like fucking guys from like uh, halfway houses and shit, and they'll bring them out. It really is funny. Yeah, fill up the audience. We have so much low self-esteem comedians, man. I just don't know if you know this. It's like Jimmy did a, something that we all do. Like, Opie says, hey, Patrice, man, I think you got a hit. And I, and I just deflect it with some. And you go, man, I hear it's, Opie goes, yeah, no, not here. It's crazy. And he's like, uh, yeah, you know, people react. And he's trying not to, you like, jinx it. You don't want to jinx it. It's just all like, the I, time. I wish I believed in God, like, heavier, so I didn't have to go, oh, I don't, yeah, maybe. I wish I could just go, yes, it's going to yeah, be a hit. And, I do and that I'm really fucking sure. All the time. No, Anytime no. something comes across that it looks like it might work out or be good, I'm like, well, we'll see. We'll We're see looking this, into uh, it. And plays out. you know we got people working on that, and hopefully uh, don't fucking jinx it. It's, it's gonna be all the fear of jinxing it. It's done to do like I, it's not even the self-esteem because like I fell in love with with you know again O and A and then Tough Crowd and they both got removed. So every time I love something, it goes. But I look forward to the I can walk in with like fucking sunglasses and a scarf and spit on everybody in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> and be it can be like Jack Black can't get Norton back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Norton, yeah. And, and he doesn't go wah, 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 no more, no more scallop talk. <laughs> yeah. Norton no got a tan and a yeah. new Rock Hudson chin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his people, his people yeah. gonna get to him eventually. There's a town I know where the hipsters go. <laughs> we got to take a little the edge out of you, Cool and smooth and shit. Yeah. You know, hey, how you doing, guys? Oh, uh, Greg, Tone, how are you? How are you? Yeah, <laughs> great. great. Tone. Wonderful. Hey, Tony. Well, Jimmy, your people are telling me that you got to go, so. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. I out of here. Yeah. But uh, listen, man, I'll see you guys. Uh... <laughs> that never gets old. No, I never, I'm actually standing looking at the clock going, yeah, I got I to gotta go to bed, but I realize I have to wrap it up here. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys, uh, Patrice, I'll see you, man. All right. Take care, Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, we'll see you in about a week, all right? Jim. Hi, sweeties. Cool. Jim Norton, everyone. Live from Hollywood. Very early for Jimmy, but he's probably still up from last night. Uh, yeah, he said he took a nap. He still does that. He's gonna nap. He doesn't sleep eight straight hours ever. No, we've seen him a couple online. hours here, four Pretty hours late. here. I don't know how he does it. We'll take a break. On the way, we gotta talk about uh, this crazy birth that happened overnight. Lady didn't even know she was pregnant. I don't know how that happened. We, we got the 911 call from uh, the the Hawaiian incident with the girl. Unbelievable. She was mm. in a car submerged in the water, calling 911 from a cell phone, and she survived. Also, we got to talk about the uh, the finger and the chili at Wendy's. That's still a story? This is great what happened to the couple that tried to scam um, Wendy's. Yeah. They got an ugly sentence for that. And then, of course, uh, American Idol and then other Opie and Anthony Bull. 80s rock theme song. This is the Opie and Anthony program. Patrice O'Neill in studio. What are we promoting today? Helium? Philly? Yeah, helium. I'm in Chicago at some point. I'm, I'm in Chicago. fucking something or another at some point. I thought you retired on the road. One show a month. Oh, okay. I go out there and see who hates me. Not a bad idea. Came out of retirement at the fucking uh, comic strip. People walking out. 
He sucks. He's booing. Oh, shit. I always try to be the first one to make fun of something fucked up, so I do the minor tragedy. Oh, you didn't. Do you have and minor jokes already? My, I'd have everything. I'm a fucking, I'm a pioneer in this fucking town, man. I take the bullet so these pussy ass niggas can go up there, <laughs> see what Patrice said about the miners, then go, okay, I know not what to say. I know what not to say. I know what to say. I, I know where the safe road is. Uh... I know what to say. I just said, look, man, you know, what the fuck? I said, hey, look, first of all, I'm not going to get upset about what the news tell me to get upset about. Second of all, when I heard the accident happen, first thing I thought was, are there still miners? What, who the fuck is mining? That's like a nigga going, yo. I'm in jail for robbing a stagecoach, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what are we mining for? Fucking coal? Are you telling me that you died so I could cook a hot dog this July 4th? Nigga. And, and, and I was oh, so rusty. No. This girl goes, one of my uncles was a miner. And it was like a black girl. And I and my brain was so fried and so not in the moment that I, I didn't go, bitch, what nigga has a mining uncle? What black person has a uncle who mine on niggas mining? So she just gets up, do the march out, and I said, uh, "All right, fuck you," and leave, and yeah, and just cursed everybody out, and shit, and just got ugly from there. Yeah, but see, I stopped that shit. I don't want to be a martyr. Right. Other comics yeah. watch me have nervous breakdowns on stage in front of people and shit too like soon, that. Too soon, too <laughs> soon. Doing the minor stuff. Yeah, but wait a month or Talk two. about it when it happens immediately. Talk See what happens. Everything is funny. Nix Marie's friggin' funeral. I, that, that one is got any jokes about child? No, that in a one's per, that's, per, that's career ending. Yeah, that's a bad one. Yeah. You can't fucking joke. There's nothing funny about that. Like it, 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 it is something funny about it. You could try to go there, but that's that one's career ending. People just well. Do we have the audio from yesterday? Uh, the news had to interview like this little girl that went to the funeral. Do we have that again to play oh, for Patrice because he wasn't here yesterday? Awful. A mom decided that uh, it was important enough to go to this woman, uh, this this little girl's funeral. Mm -hmm. Okay, mom should have been smacked. There, there's no connection whatsoever, except she read the story and the I news, heard about this shit, yeah. And she brought her little kid down there. She just went to that, look at. She a just went because I have a little girl. Right. Let me lo let me look. You know, she takes a little kid to the funeral and goes. Let me have my little girl look at a little dead girl. Right. And then uh, the news had interviewed the little girl that went to the funeral for this other little girl, and there's no connection whatsoever. Oh. Listen, listen to this little girl. The wakes for little Nix Mari are any indication of how her funeral will be. Hundreds of people are expected here at St. Mary's Church for the services at 9 a.m. While the child's mother and stepfather sit in jail, indicted by a grand jury, people old and young are mourning the death of the child. I wanted to come see her because her story touched me, and I felt so bad. That wasn't right for what her father did. Young children... Oh Jesus What God. is wrong with that little girl's parents? Why? Why would you put your little girl through that? And and the sad thing is just like, you know, we're so brainwashed, like the way we think as people, mm -hmm. that anybody listening to that in the comfort of their own fucking face, without anybody else around, you just go, you, ugh. Yeah. That fucking, who is this fucking kid? You just think Dakota Fanning immediately, and that she was prepped to A do that. Sorry, touch me. Touch me. They don't talk like that. No Puerto Rican should ever be allowed. I'm going to tell you this right now. No Puerto Rican should be allowed to tell touching stories. Now, this kid wasn't Puerto Rican, but when they start doing the, and then I, I have six kids myself, and I think that it is no, and it's no, that was so no. <laughs> it, this one, no. It's just, it takes away from my ability to go, oh, man. Yeah. It's fucked up, man. And we interviewed Valencia Velasco Lasso, and she, and then I, I would never hit my key, her kids, and die. And you just go, what the fuck? Only interview American citizens when it comes to being sad. It was a terrible thing, man. I just, it's it's hard for me to yeah. speak. And, and you can relate to that. And and go, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. some terrible yeah. shit, and, you know, well, it, it's just wrong. And I it, don't know why they hurt her like that. <laughs> That's not right. She just a baby. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah, got it. We, we understand. Oh, and well, the Daily News is in a bit of trouble today because they had a nice picture of the dead girl on the front page yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, a picture of the coffin 
open. Oh no, it was the day face. before. I was here the, 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 when was they had the little before? girl. On the, was it the day before? Right? Yeah, it was the day before because. Uh, well, they got all sorts of letters. Cover it up. They like, got ugh. they got letters. Letters. Let's see. Uh, I went to Nick's Money. Brown's Wake, and I can't get the little girl's bruised face off my mind. The Daily News uh, front page photo didn't do justice to what really showed. Oh, this guy kind of wanted a close-up. Yeah, this guy wanted more. Full color. Sick fuck. She was battered so viciously, the funeral parlor's makeup couldn't cover up the bruises. My heart bled when I saw this precious little angel in that coffin. Uh, uh, Placing the poor little girl's picture as she lay in her coffin on the cover was very disturbing and sleazy. You have crossed the line. Yep. It's Alan from Rego Park. I'd agree with Alan. Um, let's see what uh, Ellen from Walden has to say. I was dumbfounded that the news put a picture of a seven-year-old seven girl in a coffin on the front page. I hope Nix Marie's coffin sold a lot of papers for you today. Corpse. That was the goal, wasn't it? Oh, corpse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Corpse. Sold a lot of uh, papers for you today. That was the goal, wasn't it? Oh, well, mm. of course it is. Yes. But look at they got the, the picture of her with the the, the, the paper will never admit it, but of course that's the reason they do stuff like that. Look at the post today. It's like what the, what picture is this? Like it's like it's it's like a yeah. That's a school photo. Enough of that, man. Yeah, they uh they're not gonna let this story go for a while. It's selling too many papers. They love it. Uh, let's say hi to Duke in Nevada. He is a minor. Duke. Holy shit! Hey, what's up? Where's Florida? What do you? What's up, Trees? Hey, man, what's going on? You cattle rustling or fucking? Having a well, that, a, a shootout mines. at noon, motherfucker. <laughs> no, we, got, uh, we got gold mines out here. Gold, there's gold in well, them uh, hills. There you go. We you speaking my language, nigga. I'm sorry about Dude. that. Dude. Dude, have you found any gold? <laughs> you got pans and shit. You shake yeah. them. You fucking. Are you in some old <laughs> river somewhere? He's got a mule and a pick, <laughs> I, and he hits a rock and licks it. Tarnation! Yeah. What my tail? God blame me. Someone <laughs> jump my. Claim. <laughs> think I found some gold dust. A fucking miner. Jesus. Now gosh. you move on. This here's my claim. Jesus. Don't they have like the, the cotton gin yet for mines? Like the, the fucking. Can't thing they that... from a satellite see where the gold is and send a robot down to get it? <laughs> Why are they doing this to 2006, you? 2006. There shouldn't be a guy with a pickaxe. You got a pet parakeet you take down there and dies. Get out of here, boys. Dynamite <laughs> with a long Mary. fuse. <laughs> Dynamite fire in a hole. <laughs> They're still doing that shit. What the fuck are you doing, dude? All right, dude. Let us know what's going on with the mining. I want to know how you mine for gold in 2006. <laughs> how is that done? Well, we use these massive trucks that are bigger than most people's houses, and these huge shovels that do the same thing. Yeah. And we pull it all out of a huge hole in the ground, and dude, there's a whole bunch of shit that goes into it, but it's a fucking, it's a great job, it's a great way of life. And, but, uh, uh, do you have a, hel do you have a helmet with a light on it? <laughs> Answer no, me that. Underground guys. that is the underground but wait, there are guys. underground guys, <laughs> and they have helmets yes. with lights on them. Yes, is it like a do. fat lamp? <laughs> like they, uh, they light it like a candle? Uh, no. No, it's all electric. <laughs> Listen I don't to know, my dude. Man. I don't work underground. <laughs> He's in the ho 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 ho. No, hey. <laughs> right, wait a minute. <laughs> he doesn't work underground. He's no miner. You're no miner then, my friend. You're no miner. We oh, want to hear from a real miner. <laughs> and let me ask you, do you get to, like, are they, all, like, okay, for the gold, since this is gold, do they fucking make you strip butt ass naked like they do in Africa and check you, make sure you ain't stealing no fucking gold? Put diamonds up your ass. Yeah, they check them. Yep. Africans, they fucking check them dudes, man. So and uh, God help them if they find any oh diamonds my on God. those. Oh, they hobble them. So can you can if you wanted to, could you could you get away with a couple of ounces? No, this is all microscopic gold. We don't see it. We don't ever get to see it. Yeah, they pull it's, tons it's of dirt out, out of the of ground. It. And like for every exactly. ton of dirt they pull out, how much gold do you get? Uh, depending on the grade of the ore, sometimes there'll be like a like a quarter ounce to the ton. Quarter ounce like per that. ton of oh, dirt. Fuck yeah, that. but each truck each truck hauls about four hundred tons. So they're a huge, they're, massive truck. That's like yeah. a pretty wide scale version of mining. You know, they they 
Yeah, it's you, massive. There it is, and Patrice has it around his I neck. Have my, I that's, have your... <laughs> that's 8 billion tons worth of dirt on Patrice's yeah, neck. Dirt had to be, it was a lot of dirt. It's a lot of dirt. Oh, man. What do you do with the dirt? Yeah. It's, uh, but it's a good job. Hey, we lo- we fucking love you guys. We all got XM radios and our big trucks and our equipment. I got to know what he does and with the dirt, because they can't put it back in the hole, because they're mining. Uh, we got dumps out on the side where we dump the waste ore, and then we take the regular ore either to a lease pad where they lease the gold out, or we take it to a mill where they mill the gold out. Yeah. All right. Wow. We'll say hi to the boys. But it's great. Hey, we fucking love you guys. We listen to you every day. Well, give a shout out. We're, you know, what's the company, whatever? Uh, it's Elko, Nevada. We just got, uh, my fucking company just got by, bought by Barrett Gold Strike, but it's All one right. of the biggest co- gold companies in the world. We fucking love you guys. We'll talk to you later. Right, I, bought thank a, you, I bought some stock in a gold uh, outfit once. They're pretty good on it. Did yeah. You? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, it's a good stock to buy. Uh, yeah. All right, let's go to Carlos from <laughs> Old Town. Bring it on, brother. Hey, what's going on, guys? Good morning. Good morning. Love your show. Old hey, Town. Listen. I wanted to uh, I wanted to call Patrice out on uh, something you said earlier. You know, and this is this is why the educational system in this country is the way it is. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat: Puerto Ricans, Patrice, are American citizens for the I, last. I look at man. Time. Gonna educate I you. Let him educate no, you, Patrice. I, all right, go ahead, man. Go He's gonna ahead. educate you. I just it just gets so tiring to hear these idiots on. You know, oh yeah, get a you know get a green card, blah blah blah. You I, moron. Now let me. I'm gonna. I'm going to uh, I definitely understand what he's saying. Yeah. But let me explain something to you. And yeah. this is why every other race ethnic group in this country is losing. Mm-hmm. You got to understand that when I say Puerto Rican and anybody says Puerto Rican, we mean all of you. You are the banner for all of you. Puerto Rican is the easiest thing to say has a good ring to it, yeah. but we don't have the time that all the Puerto Ricans do to separate yourselves. Mexicans, Cubans, yeah. oh, I'm Guatemalan. Guatemala. Oh, we wow. don't give a shit. So this is why I'm letting you people know to get into all of you. Asians, mm-hmm. fucking Puerto Ricans, uh, uh, Hindus and Arabs, pick a fucking color. Pick a color so that we can care. I know that you're fucking U.S. citizens. No, you don't. I, no, you do. And here's the thing: they, they're, they're U.S. They're not U.S. citizens. You have, you're a U.S. Uh, 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 you're a, uh, uh, what a territory. Ah. You and you're it. not a fucking you state. Do you don't pay taxes, and your goddamn Puerto Ricans oh, won't join us. You're really not with us. And here's the thing. You know who's going to be the downfall of you people? The other Puerto Ricans that don't like you. Because people don't know this. Cubans and all other Puerto Ricans, they don't like these Puerto Ricans because right. they don't have to sneak in the country. Mm-hmm. And these motherfuckers let everybody know, like he's letting me know, we're citizens. Right. But why do you still talk like these? I know my, 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 my kids. No, 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 no. See, again, see, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. My English is probably better than yours. So. Yeah, you sound pretty good. That guy does sound pretty yeah, good. Yeah, you sound pretty good. Born and raised in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's full of shit. I, <laughs> I ain't believe it. I don't believe it. I've never heard I never heard a Puerto Rican sound like this in my life. There are Puerto Ricans that came here when they were two. They're 38 years old, and they're still like, Hey, Vato. Hey, Mira. What the? He spells Kids, K E E D S. <laughs> My kids. I know, I know that you're American. You're not American citizens. You're American uh, something. You're territory. Oh, you know, we've been citizens since like 1960. You're not citizens, like man. You're because you're not a state. It's got nothing to do with it. We were granted citizenship. You, you can come in the country without problems, but for but for real, there's going to be another vote. If you guys don't vote to be a state and we take taxes, they're gonna we they're gonna throw you to the side and you're gonna I be want, a, no. other Puerto Ricans. I want Puerto Rican tax money. We want then. Puerto Rican taxes. That's I want right. Puerto Rican tax money. <laughs> we can use some more chickens. <laughs> I don't see that, right? The Puerto Rican. I mean, he's the Puerto right. Puerto Rican tax is a chicken. He's, 1040, he's, he's easy right. chicken form. He's right, but the context is like when people say Puerto Rican, it's just that they Mexican is a Puerto Rican too. Right. So, to to the people who aren't Latino up here, you know something though, in Southern California. Puerto Ricans are Mexican. I'm Mexican. Like, everyone's Mexican. Everyone's a Mexican. Right. But you're like, look, oh I'm Puerto Rican. I, I know it's ignorant, what but it's, it, it is what it is. I got no time to figure out if a Chinese person's eyes don't do the same thing as a Korean's. Right. 
we got we've got regular U.S. Postal Service down there. All right, Carl. <laughs> All right, it's Thank selling you, Puerto, Rico. Selling Puerto Rico. Don't worry, man. we're still going there. We love your beaches. <laughs> Uh, there he goes. Bye, Carlos. He thought I said beaches. Beaches? I meant be where you go to swim. Where you go to swim, not women. See, his English isn't that good, motherfucker. I love your beaches. I love her, too. I love our beaches, too. Let's go to Joe in Massachusetts. Joe. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, I got a really bad joke for you. Yeah. What did, uh, what did Jesus say to the Puerto Ricans before he died? Mm. Don't do anything till I get back. Punching out. See, get it, because they don't work. <laughs> You don't do anything. Oh I, I, I fill in, and he laughs at the joke that he bombed with. <laughs> I hated that joke. That's, that's uh, great. That was stupid. Uh, All right. <laughs> we got some things to go over today. Uh, San Jose, California. A couple. Remember this story? A couple who planted a um, severed finger in a bowl of Wendy's chili. Remember that? It went down about a year ago. She bought and she bought it from a from a dude. She bought the the finger severed finger yeah. and decided, all right, I'm going to throw this in some chili. I'm going to go back up to the counter and go, look what I found in your goddamn chili. Oh, she was seeing friggin' She was seeing dollar, dollar signs. Sign. That's it. Because uh, we've all heard the story. Someone burns their stupid penis on a hot cup of coffee. Next thing you know, we're paying him ten fucking million dollars. Sips on his testicles on a wobbly toilet seat somewhere. Right, right. All yeah, that crap. All those uh, frivolous lawsuits, they call them. Well, holy crap. A couple who planted a severed finger in a bowl of Wendy's chili in a scheme to extort money from the fast food chain was sentenced yesterday to lengthy prison terms. Wow. Anna Ayala, 40, who said she bit into the Puerto digit, Rican. was uh, sentenced to nine years in state prison. She got nine years. Holy nine shit. Nine fucking years in state prison. In the, in the big house? In the big house. Her husband, wow. uh, Jane Placencia, 44, who obtained the finger from a co-worker who lost it in a workplace accident. He, they got the finger from a co-worker? Like, he that would be hard to hold it. That wouldn't be hard to, like, uh, track down. No, how about you, you get your finger chopped off? At work, and you don't go to the hospital with it, packed in ice, to try to reattach it. You just go, oh, well, my finger is gone. <laughs> Maybe I can sell it to my cousin. <laughs> like, it's not a friggin' hubcap or something. <laughs> he sold his fucking finger. He sold his finger. And you know finger. it couldn't have been for more than 50, 60 bucks. Nah, you know it's on the cheap. <laughs> well, the husband of this lady who claimed this happened, uh, he got 12 years. Oh my God. She got nine, and uh, he got 12. That's what was the crime? Man. What do they call Damn. the crime? Fraud? Uh, the pair pleaded guilty... To conspiracy to file a false insurance claim and attempted grand theft with damage, damages exceeding 2.5 million. Oh wow! See, that was the uh, amount. Grand fraud. I got him. Ayala said she retched March 22nd after biting into the fingertip at a Wendy's in San Jose, California. How do you get caught though? They tracked that f finger down. They didn't know where it came from. No. The, yeah. Fuck the, yeah. Wendy's. Wendy's had this whole investigation. Went through all their processing plant, and everything, and asked if anybody had uh, lost a digit. A digit. Yeah, but and still, no one how did. do you come? How do you? How do you know? So know they it's look, fraud. So the police start thinking there's some some fishy going on. They start looking at the family that's pulling the shenanigans, and start looking if anybody lost a finger at work uh, that they know. Any relatives of theirs, and they come across, you know, cousin Jose working at the mill or a miner, whatever he does, and there he is, nine what, fingers what? on his hand, and finger. And they did a test, and it was his finger. And, yeah, it's probably easy to figure out. <clears throat> did he get in trouble for selling his finger? I don't know. I don't think that's a crime, is it? Finger selling? Finger selling. Well, William Shatner just sold his gallbladder, so if that, you see that? If that shows up in somebody's God chicken noodle soup. Pam kidney stone he or sold, something. sold, uh, yeah, a stone to goldenpalace.com. 25 large. We were trying to do that that bit. Sell something funky like that? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to sell, though? I'm trying to remember what it was. Someone, to, Somebody had a body that's part. That's something you pee out. You, that's the kidney stone is something you pee out, right? Well, yeah, it's supposed to be you can. really painful. And uh, it, it's got to work its way through your kidneys. Which are like just filled with these balls of spaghetti, and it works its way through these tubes, and it just chews its way through. Like every little there, th and it's like a little meteor. So it's a bunch of points on it, and it just tears shit up the whole way. How big is it? And then the, the final finale is it's got to go through your dick. <laughs> got to go through your little pee hole. They they range in size from a little tiny little thing up to the size of a uh, good size pea. And they're just spiky. You ever had one? 
No, my brother oh, did. No. Oh, he no. was laid up like like he would. I, I it was years ago when I was living in a, in a house with like five other people, and we used to call it Pee Wee's Playhouse. It was just nothing but us goofing off and drinking the whole time, uh, hiding when the landlord showed up, shit like that. And my brother was staying over, and he would just we we. I it feel became weak something right now. I, know. I feel just like it became wobbly. something he did as we were just hanging out drinking. He would just lay down on the floor in the fetal position, moaning. Uh. Uh, As it's working horrible. its way through the kidneys. Yeah. And then through the, the ure- pain, it's an, urethra. It's pain in the kidneys, through, too. Yeah. But then it's horror when it gets to the to the dick. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's got to work its way out. Then you like you can feel it in your back when you have kidneys. <sighs> and then up front in the bladder and the then through the urethra. It, and it's just and chewing up everything. And then when it comes out, it just makes a sound like a dime hitting the bottom of the toilet. Clunk. Ding. <laughs> oh, fuck me, You're supposed man. to piss through you're a done. filter. You're supposed to piss through a filter uh, for a while. It looks like a big coffee filter uh, to see when it comes out so you can take it to the doctor, I guess, and you can make sure it's I'm all out. I'm just feeling nauseous and that William Shatner have tried to fucking sold that hunk of... That and there's these little, like, blood shards that come out with it. As it's ripping you. As it's just ripping, yeah. Yeah. ripping you out of your tube. Fucking your dick tube. As it turns your penis into a vagina. <laughs> right. Vagina. Dana, St. Louis, what's up? Hey guys, I love my Dana? radio. I love your show. Uh, please. Were you please, on American please. Idol last night, Dana? <laughs> no, sir, I was not. Listen, let me. Why the Why the chick name? We We got to get to the bottom of this. Well, uh, I I don't guys, know many guys named Dana. That's all. Maybe I'm being Dana stupid. Carvey. My, well, my Dana Carvey's a biggie. You're right. My parents, there, way back when, I guess there was a movie star by the name of Dana Andrews. Yeah, Dana Andrews. And uh, and so that's I guess that's where it's from. I don't know. I'm stuck with it. I guess I'm kind of like Patrice. I'm going to have to go through my whole life explaining my first name. Any nickname <laughs> so it's not Dana? Dane? No. Defunct? No, it, it, it's, it's Dana. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, uh, please make Patrice a permanent addition to the show. His humor fuck no. is so funny. <laughs> fuck that, that nigga. So true. <laughs> Opie said Puerto fuck Rico, that nigga. I, I had to pull over because I was laughing so damn hard. I love your show. I love it, man. Keep rocking, guys. I'm punching out. All, All right, right, D-Bone. All right. There you go. Dana digs you, man. Dana's, uh, Dana. Dana's in love the, with you. The men with the women's names. Patrice gets good reviews. Opie, Opie's like, fuck that, nigga. <laughs> fuck, fuck that, that shit. nigga. Fuck that shit. You know what happens? You compliment them too many times, they get what they call uppity. Uppity. <laughs> Start making demands and shit. Uh, that's right. We got to keep you down. I know. I asked, asked for cereal down. this morning. Usually it's some eggs. Did this motherfucker just ask for some gold Right. We got to keep you down. <laughs> keep, keep the man down. You yeah, stay right. out the master's kitchen, boy. I'll be coming in here all fucking vossed up. Hey, everybody. Patrice, you big dummy. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy yeah. to be here. Thanks, Gregory. Yes, happy to be part of it. <laughs> Thanks, AC. Fucking <laughs> boss. Oh, that's what happens. You take a nice <laughs> swing at somebody's head. Yeah. All right, we got the next story. This one's even better. All right. Listen to this. In Hawaii, a dramatic call for help. Police have released tapes of a desperate 911 call made by a teenage girl in a sinking car. Hot. Her grandfather was backing out of a parking stall at a yacht club when it plunged into the water. Old people. Talking. I'm in the car and I can't open the door and the water's coming in and we're sinking. No, and I'm gonna drown. Waikiki Yacht Club. Yes. Okay, we're sending some trucks. Please hurry. Okay, can you open the window? Hello. Hello. Oh, boy. Her grandfather did not survive. A good Samaritan jumped in the water and pulled the girl to safety. Police are investigating whether he may have been drinking. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just drinking. You got a kid in the car. Good old granddad. Grandpa trying to drive. I hate with all my heart the 911 operators on every call. They're just yeah. so smooth. Please get as as scared as I am. I'm in a car sinking. Oh, shit. All right. So, so. All right. Okay. Oh, You're, kidding. You're kidding me. Right. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He's like, all right, we'll send some trucks. You're so right. 
I, I think that, that would make you feel a little better. Oh, if you're on the other end, the panic. Because like, like making... then you know they're doing everything they could possibly be doing. Because <laughs> that guy's talking so smooth, you don't know that he's actually going through procedures. Like, he's he's already called the cops. You're thinking there's the other way. calls that might be in front of yours. Right, right. <laughs> like, well, all right, you're in a sinking car, but I got this guy I got to deal with. I'm in quicksand, and I, I, I'm up to my chest. Holy, Holy shit! shit! Nigga! <laughs> Charlie, listen to this. <laughs> what you do for quicksand? Right. You know the address? I don't know wherever quicksand is. Oh, oh God. God. We'll send a helicopter and everything we got. Oh, no. Yeah, I think I'd be more freaked out if the 911 operator was just smooth. That's, You're so right. This little girl's like, I'm, I'm in a car I'm sinking. I don't want to drown. Okay. We're, we're like it's like yeah. I know it's a technique to keep you calm, but it's like I don't want calm. I want you to be horrified Panic. like me. Panic, because I'm panicking. All right, can you open the window? <laughs> How's the weather there? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Try to spark up some small talk. <laughs> How's there... you doing, school? Yeah, uh, good. <laughs> maybe there's a good song on the radio. Uh... Yeah. Did you go out on a boat today? <laughs> I'm sinking. Oh, I hate that I'm shit. I'm sinking man. in Daddy's Buick and your grandfather's Buick. I Could don't you please die. Some... Yeah. I don't want to die. Well, we all don't want to drown. That's a pretty horrific way to go. Now, how deep do you see fish out your windshield right now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Turn on the wipers. You ever hear our best 911 see. call? You got those, E Rock? Oh, we got some 911 calls. Uh, we got to play them the one. About the, uh, well, I don't want to give it away. Yeah, don't ruin it. Let me see. Oh, it. It's uh, not, I always hate it. Yeah, the smart ass so dispa <laughs> Listen to this one, the smart ass dispatcher. All right, hit that. 911, what is your emergency? Yes, um, I need a police officer over here. What's going on? Um, I've got two teenage daughters, and I just got home from work. They were um, physically fighting with each other, and one of them kicked a hole in a door. And um, they're 12 and almost 14, and the 12-year-old is completely out of control. And I, I can't, I physically, if she's as big as I am, I can't control her. Okay, did you want us to come over to shoot her? Are you there? Excuse me? Uh, that's a joke. Okay, so who are you? What are you? <laughs> that's a joke. Okay, now, <laughs> you, I'm going I'm to pull some Jedi mind shit on you so you forget what I just said because I just saw my job go out the fucking window. <laughs> Isn't that great? The joke failed miserably. And he's like, oh, uh -oh. shit. I thought uh -oh. I could kill him with this one. But he could have he maintained it if he kept his seriousness. Right. Do you want us to come shoot her, ma'am? Shoot her? No, I'm serious. We, that is an option. We, <laughs> right. leave, we leave all options open for your safety, ma'am. But no, he was like, uh, it was a joke. Okay, let's move on now. <laughs> you forget about the joke. Yeah, let's. Uh... But she was not ready to move on. And and I, I, after listening to this a couple of times, I think he was within his rights to do that. This is not a fucking 911 call. Yeah, I can't. There I are can't people sinking in yeah. Grandpa's car, and the cars are supposed to go out uh, because she can't handle her kids. Right. Well, listen again. Listen to the joke fail miserably. Hit almost 14, and the 12-year-old is completely out of control, and I, I can't, I physically, if she's as big as I am, I can't control her. Okay, did you want us to come over to shoot her? Are you there? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, that's a joke. Okay, so... Who are you? What is your name? Mike Forbes. Okay, that's not funny, Mike. I'm and sorry. I'm going to file a formal complaint. That's uh, Mike Forbes. I don't blame you a bit. Hey, because you know what? Uh, this is really not very funny. I know it's not, ma'am. Well, apologize. guess what? It's not going to be very funny when I go in front of your supervisor and tell him. I understand. Well, me, I guess he can just listen to the tape. Uh, yeah, he can. Can. Oh, now, she messed with the wrong and, cunt, boy. And now she's beating the shit out of him, and you can hear the phone ring in the background, and you know that's someone else in someone distress. Someone else sinking in their car. <laughs> that's the little girl. But yeah, he yeah. can't. My grandfather. <laughs> right. But he can't answer that because he's, he's got to deal with this. Shit. Oh There's my like God. a real emergency on the other line, but he can't go to that call because this bitch has to and, tell him what. And now every bit of anger she was feeling because she's a bad parent and can't handle her fucking kids, every bit of that anger is now completely switched like a rail on a train. Cheek, cheek, choo, choo, on another track. Now it is completely focused on this guy. Yes. Go back to it. She doesn't care about her kids now anymore. Wait, yep. That's not a problem. Yeah, listen to the phone just ringing off the hook in the background. He can't. And, and, and quickly, an emergency situation. 
if that guy was screwing around, if it was such a big emergency, she'd have dealt with this guy later mm -hmm. and been like, you know, you don't sit there while someone's bleeding to death and argue with a man about what he said to you on the 911 line. Right, you right, go, right. all right, whatever. Send the ambulance. Here's the address. Here's this. That. This shows that this wasn't an emergency because she completely doesn't care about the emergency anymore. And now she's just after this guy's ass. All right. Here we go. Uh, this is really not very funny. I know it's not, ma'am. Well, wrong. guess what? It's not going to be very funny when I go in front of your supervisor and tell him. I understand. He's, I Rain. guess he can just listen to the tape. <laughs> yes, he can. Rain, I'm what sorry. the fuck is happening? Well, sorry doesn't Hold cut on it. I need a second. police officer. Hold on. Rain. I'm here at an industrial mill with a guy with no hands, and the phone's ringing. Ma'am? Yeah. Okay. 12 and 10 and 12 or 12 and 14? 12 and 13 and a half. Okay. All right. I'll get police officers on the way. They're on an emergency call right now, but as soon as I can get one free, I'll get them on the way. Oh, well, don't rush or anything. Well, I, oh. I apologize for my smart remark, and I will get them in oh. route as soon as I can. Okay, and what is your name again? Megan, my please job. Forbes, my number is 605. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Jesus. And he, he, he didn't get fired, though. I, I hope not. No, I we we actually we actually got the background story on that. He was reprimanded, but not fired. Yeah, because okay. he because he's a smart act. That's fucking good old court. He yeah. he always says shit like that. Yeah, you know I'm he's shot. He's a fun guy. At the, oh, shot fact. in my stomach. Do you fit? You think it's your liver or your fucking kidneys? <laughs> yeah. What, uh, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> Did you shit yourself or piss yourself? <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> just a little joke. Because he knows what he's doing. He's just a jokester. No one else knows what they're doing. He's yeah. really good at his job. He yeah. fucking probably can oh, type yeah. with both hands and two different. Yeah. He also knows, that, yeah, that it's just a ridiculous call. Hedda in New York has something for Anthony. Hedda? Uh, it's Newark. Uh, what's up, guys? Oh, Newark, hey, sorry. Hey, uh, Anthony, man, I noticed yeah. that lately you've been re very racist. Right? Lately? <laughs> I take offense to that. No, I, well, the old show, you weren't that racist. And it seems like with uh, Patrice there, you're trying to hold it back a little bit. Patrice, when you're not there, this guy is, is damn near Hitler. I mean, he, he, he... Oh, he, oh. Uh, so, uh, what is it, he Hedda? Hedda, yeah, I'm Hedda. very happy. So you say... Hedda. Oh, see, I got an XM radio now, motherfucker. I can yeah. hear you. You know what? Thank you, Hedda. I, Sir? He's up here smiling in the black man's face, but his good old AC, oh. the racist. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Thank you, Hedda, man. Hedda, do you have an example or something? That, oh, uh, all that Hitler stuff. Uh, you, 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 when you talk about Hitler, you talk about it with gusto. It's like... Uh, <laughs> with uh, gusto, uh, you I, bastard. Really like do you think that kind of racism is the kind of racism that Patrice even cares about? No, <laughs> Anti-Semitism? No, he don't care. The Blacks hate the not, Jews. Not only that, like uh, sometimes when, uh, like for example, you might do a news story uh, about, uh, say, a black a black guy committed a crime. You say something smart, like if I could find one in the paper, I'd do a story oh, about it. Oh yeah, you you'd be like, uh, oh yeah, well, who else is going to be, you know, like the niggers, you know, like that, whatever. I oh, never you now mother now you're lying. F I'm lying, sir. Now you are lying. I never. Our listeners are great with that. Have I ever looked? I, I, and read a news story. I, I, shut up. Let me talk now. Uh -oh, Have I go. ever read a news story and gone, Opie, uh, the niggers are at it again. Uh, no, I can't say have I ever done that? Not no, on the air, no. I can't say you did. <laughs> well, look, I'm just talking about what the listeners hear, not my drive home. <laughs> I never heard you call anybody a nigger. There's absolutely two different shows that come on. I hear his context. One on air and one off air. Yeah. When I get here, you're just a little more liberal. A little bit. A little bit. You know yeah. what? But that's why I'm here from time to time, Hedda, so that I can control this his racist rants. And I imagine he, if I wasn't here for Martin Luther King's birthday, oh, what these two been, motherfuckers would have said about it. It would have been a mess. And Hedda, you, stop blowing up our spot. Alabama's no, just about no, liking no, us yeah. at this point. One more, one, more thing, one, more, one more thing to say. Anthony is funny as hell. Keep it up, though. <laughs> Thank you, Hedda. <laughs> and I... That's trying to sell me out to my pal. <laughs> over here. What the... Dirty racist. <laughs> and I... I'm... Hear him. Uh, and I'm <laughs> just what I thought. All right, Hedda, thanks. Thanks for the help. What a thanks for helping out my insecurity. What today. a selling out, <laughs> blow up my spot, son of a bitch that guy was. Oh, well, here come the examples. Opie, Opie is as big a racist. Let me tell you something. Opie, a Anthony, you're, you know what you are? You are yeah. a, uh, 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 you try to reason 
through your, through the racism. Thank you. I'm a diplomat. Obi is a complete hunk of shit with the racism. Just Fuck, I, asshole. I, he comes up with some shit that only a racist could even about the chess and to yeah. say there's no king on a black chessboard. Right. Can you? That's just deep down fucking hunk of shit right there. That's taking just a, a hunk of shit move. Taking a that's just stereotype. A taste of that's just a taste of the of the, Don't call of me the racist. nigga I used chess to, board. I used to oh. play basketball with with the colored. That there it is. <laughs> and they wouldn't let him play. Yep. They fucking he called him tight ass hunky. And I I I kept my own with the with the brothers they on the them. court back in the yeah. day. All right, listen to me. We got some examples of okay. Anthony's racism. Right. It's not about me today, Brian. Brian. North Carolina. Yeah, I gotta call you out on it a little bit. I uh, I really don't care what you talk about. I think it's all funny. But I uh, got two examples. First being when you're talking about the mayor of. Uh, <laughs> right. Hey, you talk about it completely different when Patrice is there. Yesterday you were talking about it. You're like Anthony. He's a chop about putting chocolate back in New Orleans. And yeah. the other example was black Earl paying for the check. And when Earl started complaining for it, he said, "I don't see some nigger rage." Whoa. And uh, oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, I never said Pop that. Bitch, what happened? I kind of never said that. A little bit. I deny that. Categorically, I Listen never said that about <laughs> Earl. All right, thank you, Brian. Right, See, no one has a real example. No one, no one has a great <laughs> example. Everybody's trying to call him. They will race. never find. <laughs> I am. I tiptoe. Hey, you do have footnotes, baby. I, I got the footnotes. You got footnotes. I got facts and figures to back up my racism. <laughs> We're gonna back up. We got the uh, the finger in the chili story. Oh. To, to get more of the facts out there. I don't think we had all of them. And it was a gruesome and, to many people, a nauseating story that grabbed the country's attention. A human finger found in a bowl of fast food chili. Now the couple behind what turned out to be an extortion scam is facing a long stretch in prison. Here's ABC's Neil Karlinski. Anna Ayala says from behind bars, she wasn't surprised to receive such a harsh sentence. Nine years in prison. I, I was expecting it. Obviously, I committed a crime, and I should pay for it. Earlier in the San Jose courtroom, there were only tears as she accepted responsibility for the strange scheme in which she claimed to find a finger in a bowl of Wendy's chili. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Wendy's was hit hard by the scandal and some of the worst publicity a restaurant could ask for. The company estimated losses at two and a half million dollars, and some employees had to be That's laid off. Nothing. The owner of the Wendy's where the scam took place asked the judge for a stiff sentence. Please, judge, send a clear message. And the judge agreed. Her husband, who obtained the finger from someone who lost it in an accident, was given more than 12 years. Why Wendy's? It was there. It was there. It wasn't planned. It was just something that happened. She says the experience has changed her. And let this be an example. I mean, everybody out there... All those young people that learn from this. All Her motive, she says, was simple. Greed. Enough of trying to help the young All people. All those young people that have fingers and want to put them in chili. <laughs> right. Like, I know, exactly. Like, uh, she's going to teach them now. She's going to teach the youth of America. You got caught. Shut up. You lose. Good day. <clears throat> See ya. They, get the, they pulled some CSI stuff on him. Hey, uh... Mr. Oh. Voss. What's up? Rich that Voss. Was, what's going on? Hey, Rich. How are you? First of all, how did she say that wasn't premeditated? You went out, the guy went out and got a finger, but it just happened that he ended up with a finger that he dropped in chili. That was premeditated. I, I like how these guys were thinking. Hold on one second. We're a little distracted. Wow. What's up there, guys? We're watching something on, uh, what show is this on ABC? Uh, Good Morning America. Good Morning America about how to get out of a car that's sinking, and they got a guy sitting there while the car sinks. This is an old clip. This guy did this a couple of years back. Did he? Oh, he yeah. cut his hand open. Basically, what they say is that, uh, was the window down when he went in? you got to wait for the pressure to equalize. I hear if you know you're going over, if you if you could at least get the... Unbuckle your seatbelt. It says open window and get out the window if you can. Right. You're supposed to open that window before you uh, submerge, if you can. If you, you can. Or you could do the Ted Kennedy thing, just walk away. Because <laughs> the key is to equalize... 
You think okay, it, well. it'd be smart to keep the windows open, but basically if you're going over a bridge or something, you want to try to open up the window before it sinks all the way. Yeah, but if you can't, if you got power windows and there's a short or something like that, then you got to wait until enough water fills up the vehicle. Right. Oh, that yeah, you no, can he opened open the door it. just now. And that has got to be... You can open the door if, there's enough, if the water Oof. equalizes and is in the car. That's it, a it tough like time. It like you had to open it up immediately. You had to open the door immediately, let the water... Come in because once but you, you can't open it, you can't open it underwater. That's right. That's what I'm saying. You so have to open it on top of the water. That's right. And, and or at least open the window so the water comes rushing in, so it equalizes. Then you can easily open the door and get out the window if you can, uh, you it's, can do it's, that. It's a nightmare, Voss. What's up? What's going on, Voss? Thank you. Thank you for the uh, for running my interview. Did uh, uh, Did you hear the phone ringing? No, no, what happened? I'll tell you the truth. I, it was in my coat pocket. You know, and I had that. I wasn't wearing my coat. It was on vibrate. And then I just get this strange feeling. I'm going, I'm in Boston. I know these creeps are listening. I, that's why I, you know, even before I went in, I go, uh, I told the story before when I did the uh, dumb, uh, you know, the honeymoon thing. Yeah. We, go, it's, not like, it's not like I haven't done this. I've done it before. I, oh, uh, that's yeah, why you did uh, that? Because we were reciting the bit as you were doing it. Okay. So, so then, <laughs> but then, then during break or something, um, I take my phone out. I go, ah, oh, seven missed calls. Seven. <laughs> Call me seven times. Seven early in the morning. Okay. And uh, I go, uh, it's it's, it's going to be too uncomfortable. But I got some good clothes for you guys, and I don't know if you heard them. No, no, we're hoping that we got a tape of it because then I heard they started taking phone calls, and you got a few Ramones that got through. Yeah, but I mean, I was saying how funny O and A are, and then I go, "We're doing a Wow stop, uh, if you want Wow stickers." Oh, and, that's cool. Uh, I did. You didn't do the. You didn't hear the whole bit about how I took Patrice as my opening act on the road. No. Was, oh, see the funny stuff, and then I told. Uh, well, I think uh, one of our Boston listeners actually taped it, and we're gonna get the tape, and we'll play oh, okay. it tomorrow or something, or later today. And then I, uh, I was telling. Uh, they were asking about my daughter. I said she goes out with some horrible kid named Willie Burr. <laughs> oh really, <laughs> Willie Burr? Are oh, you doing inside <laughs> jokes? That's that's yeah. good. And uh, whatever. So, dude, you got to uh, understand, our pests are everywhere. We had oh, no I, idea I, you were in Boston. Also, one of the pests called up and said, "Hey, dude, uh, Voss is on in Boston. You want to listen?" I'm like, yeah, definitely. Well, it started. I mean, you know how these interviews. So you're in for ten, fifteen minutes, whatever. It was, it was all right. Uh, but I knew if I would have picked up, it would have just been another radio bridge I burned. Uh, you did you fine. Know. What are you doing in Boston? I'm doing a comedy connection. Uh, I'm with, doing it. <clears throat> with good old Bill Blumenreich. Yeah, Friday and Saturday. Well, I, I haven't seen you since New Year's Eve. What a great show that was. Uh, yeah, you guys uh, kicked ass down there. That was a lot of fun. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone kicked ass down there for Norton's show. Norton, uh, Colin Quinn, and Voss. That was fun. Who's in the studio? Uh, Patrice? Yep. Hi, honey bun. What's up, sweetie? Are you mad at me or something? You know, you're not talking. I'm just letting you fucking talk, asshole. Jesus, you be, I, I never heard you talk for five minutes without saying Bonnie's name, dickface. I didn't You're enjoying it. it. Yeah, I just wanted to hear I just wanted to hear old Voss talk again without fucking his wife. I didn't say it. Plugging his wife. Ah, my wife's panties. Today I bought her some new panties and fuck a puka hook her head up. Oh, you're, you know, you, fuck you, a you, suck, you know what? You suck just all bit of life. You're like a. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. See, this, the dementia. old Voss would never say any shit like you suck. See, I'm trying to be positive. Shut up, Voss. I want negativity, you motherfucker. Give me some negativity. <laughs> Z100XL radio. Shut up. God damn it. I just was enjoying you sounding like a goddamn grown man again for five seconds. I am. I'm not like, I didn't talk about any broads or anything. I didn't talk about my wife. I'm talking about guy shit, you know? I'm just a dude now. You were talking about your wife having her period on. We heard you. I, I did that one dumb bit. Cause no, I, you didn't. No, you talked about you your honeymoon. You talked about the HBO special she did. And then you also oh, talked about how she put her he head on some yeah, stranger's. Stranger's. Uh, that was a new bit, and it's funny. It was a true story. Well, that's not the point, Voss. The point is, you just said you don't. You talk about guy stuff. Well, here's the, you know, if you can get the tape of me last week on radio, I just destroyed it. Some place, you know, look at three years on the road. I'm doing hundreds and hundreds of radio stations. Sometimes you're in, into it, and sometimes you're not, and you just put it on autopilot. You guys know that, all right? I don't but, know that. Because you don't work that much. You know what? <laughs> you know, the story about Patrice, Ob, and Anthony. But we were doing shows. We did two shows. They were sponsored by the uh, ACLU fundraisers. Yeah. But ACLU, right? Patrice 
what, they said we can't use him on the second show. He was too offensive. <laughs> the ACLU who pushes the First Amendment. Yeah, it's censored. <laughs> the ACLU <laughs> defends Nazis. And they defied that... That's Pedophiles, everybody. <laughs> yeah. They want pedophiles Jesus taken off of the list and stuff. New, he's pulling neutron bombs out on me. Jesus, boss. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Too offensive for the ACLU. <laughs> yeah. I feel, like, I feel like getting kicked out of Nambla for liking too many young boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I gave you credit on the radio when, you wasn't, when, when it was off air, though. I said I was telling Anthony that. I think that you're just happy because you just feel like this is the first time in your life you feel like a, a responsible man. Like uh -huh. you're, you're doing all the things that that like men do. You have a fa you have a family. That, yeah. You have a house. You just and society deems you a person now. Right, and you're not like you're this rebel anymore. You really feel like life is something that you should be a part of. And I understand. It. I gave you credit where credit's due. Listen to me. Listen to me. All right. I, I had that feeling you're talking about with my first marriage, okay? The whole week. No, you didn't. You was in a fog, you fucking okay. junkie. We, we're oh, talking about now. We're talking about sober vaults. Now, now it's, I'm getting old and lonely. There's a difference between <laughs> old and lonely. And, you know, how many times can you take some snaggle tooth waitress from a comedy club behind a dumpster and, and <laughs> Jesus her soul, fucking right? Right. You know, Jesus a, boss hey, he's a hopeless romantic isn't he <laughs> oh did you bring oh. her flowers hold on snaggle tooth hold on. did you him, give her unpeeled bananas let him talk he's on a roll here you know so I mean it's just you know you get to be my age you just want a, a little security someone who might you know be able to so it wasn't about love no, I, I, I love her. Uh, <laughs> gotta call you out on that, boss. <laughs> you just said it's no, I'm in something. love. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you something, too. If I didn't have her, I didn't, if I knew about this whole MySpace thing before I met her, all these hot broads, what are you kidding me? Oh, but. What you know, you, you, you're getting a lot of uh, MySpace girls? I, yeah, they always. Can I be your friend? Can I be your friend? Yeah, you could be my friend. That's, yeah, of course. You can be my friend. How many friends like, you got? It's fake friendship. I hate MySpace. Uh, how many friends? I got like 4,000. I, I used to get more when Anthony, Anthony had me in his top eight. Oh, shit. You took I them off? I switched my top eight around. I Anthony, switch it up. Anthony I had put, the soldiers on uh, Anthony, for, for a couple of weeks. Anthony put... Uh, no Bobby black Kelly people on the top eight, eight ever. No. I, I, is that true? You've never had a black person on your Jesus, top eight. Anthony. Let me think. I, I think you're right. I think you need to go home today all right. and What's make you? all your top eight schwuggies. I will, for the, for, you know something? Wait a minute. Should be for the month of February, but it's close enough. Okay. I will have an entire black top eight for, uh, for Black History Month. Oh, man, it's going to be you, sweating you, at home. You <laughs> I don't figure it out. I, I hope I can find eight. I have 10,000, over 10,000 friends. I and think I've have, denied every uh, black and they person. They have to be black, really, not Halle Berry black. No, they no, be, uh, they gotta be latte. They gotta be black. They black gotta color. be. They they gotta be <laughs> Mickey Rivers black. <laughs> ass. They gotta be any black motherfucker. Well, any okay. shade of black. They gotta be Manute <laughs> Bowl <Any> black. <laughs> <laughs> they, I want to see zero black. To Sixty. You can't, I them. want it to be so black you can barely see their faces. <laughs> let them crawl before he walks. <laughs> yeah, come on. My top eight looks like Greenwich. <laughs> Jesus, there has we to be want some to racial some mixing black. in there somewhere. It's just something. Can't make it. <laughs> you put Patrice in your top eight, you only need four more. Nothing. <laughs> it was going so good. I was doing so good. It really was. All right. was so good old boss. I was going good. Don't cut me off because I have one bad one, all right, when I have ten good ones. Well, they were telling us uh, that you got to go. Yeah. Who was telling you that? <laughs> you guys were telling you that. You guys are telling you that. You know what? No, it I says guess. right here, Voss has to go. You have to do another interview or something. I don't know. No, I don't know no, what I your don't. people are getting listen, at. You can kick me off and you can do all that, but I'm going to be big again this year. This is my year, pal. <laughs> Your so, year? You know what? Yeah, I got things fucking cooking. And Last like, comic standing is back again, too, Voss. You know that. Yeah, I know. I heard. Voss, what do you have cooking? We should get that out of the way. I, I'm not going <laughs> Oh, he is pissed right now. He is pissed. <laughs> Staring into his phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bastard. Oh, good old boss. Kevin from Connecticut. Uh, hey, Anthony, what's in cigarettes? Uh, nicotine. 
Hey, Anthony, what's in cigarettes? Kevin wants to know from Connecticut. Okay, that was a character I was doing. It was 1940s uh, guy. In, excuse me, God, I feel it. it. Was the, no, it was, it was this guy. <laughs> no tar or nicotine here in Lucky Strike Cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> the cigarettes are one no more for America. See, he's not racist because he does it in character. Because he does it in character. What a <laughs> tricky asshole. I do it in character. It's low in nicotine and tar, baby. <laughs> that old gag brought back one more time. <laughs> By the way, everyone is raving about your history channel, Reed. Can we get that? Isolate or oh, really? have that before we go to break? They uh, they want you to do it in your 1940s voice. Yeah, the 40s voice. Apparently, there's one for Air America too that uh, airs on the platform. Uh, <laughs> that I did the whole thing in the uh, the old 40 guy voice. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll find that. And we'll play when we get back from All break. All right. You got it. Not. It, it wasn't. I know. E Rock. He's got it. E Rock. What a. Why dummy. do you upset Opie like this? I know he's got it. I know Derek is good and he's going to find it. God. It was my way of just Damn. maybe making people go, ah, I want to hear that. So uh, instead of going to the 80s channel, I'll give these guys another 20 minutes or so. I bring nothing to the table. Exactly. That's right, E Rock. With that, uh, Patrice O'Neill in studio, and we'll continue. We don't understand the country. Sorry. We try, we just don't get it. There's like hardcore country fans that listen to this program. And we got nothing for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> we just we just don't get it. We don't understand it. I used to hell dub. I'm tired of your fucking city slickers and your whole I shit. couldn't tell you the the top country song in America. I couldn't nope. I couldn't even get one of them. No. I couldn't even get one of the top ten. Yeah, it kind of crossed it. over a, a, for a little while when Garth Brooks was big. Right. There was a big country crossover. Remember, like all of a sudden somebody you knew started wearing cowboy boots. I was more of an achy breaky heart guy. You? No, I'm just kidding. But my girl lost her foot in a in a lawnmower accident. That's number one. <laughs> That's the number one song. Bob Bob uh, Bootney. <laughs> Bob Bootney um, Carnsby. Bill, Billy Bo Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Billy Bob Russell. My girl lost a foot. I, uh, hello, I'm Billy Bob Russell. <laughs> give me the I, uh, give me the top ten country songs in America, and we'll do a little riffing. I was into the uh, country uh, way back when, when I was uh, growing up, because I was out in, out west and I rode horses. So uh, my father always had it on in the in the truck. But that was your old school country. Dude, you know, like, you're a little well, red that, but everybody, and shit. everybody like that old school. Old school country yeah. was was like super crossover. Like you know, you just you know old school country songs because they're not really like country kind of thing. Yeah, like, it was know. it was pretty. It was like I think the big crossover back then was the Stand by Your Man. Stand by your man. Oh, the coal Bam. miner's daughter. Don't or, matter who he's fucking. <laughs> just keep on sucking on his cock. <laughs> that was the whole song. Stand by him. Don't matter what he does. Islands in the stream. Yeah. Fucking anything by Charlie Pride. He or, might punch you in the face, but stand by <laughs> your man. <laughs> Show the world you love him. <laughs> and they throw him bottles at the fucking screens <laughs> on front of the stage. <laughs> Roll him up. Pull him up. Pull him up. Oh, hide. Hit him up. Ah! There was some, uh, <laughs> some big country songs back then. Yeah, yeah, now I don't even know who the fuck. Aggie Breaky Heart was the last thing mm. that crossed over into my... You like, would I, know Garth Brooks' song, wouldn't you? I know you? not one. No? I, whatever his most famous song is that I should yeah, know, I probably, probably don't know it. Really? <clears throat> but Aggie Break Your Heart, I knew. Cause What's like Garth? Huge. What was Garth's biggest hit? What was his biggest I hit have, song? I don't know. You don't even know? Well, maybe Patrice wouldn't no know. Fucking Patrice cool. knows a lot about white culture, though. I'm from Boston, really dude. studied and it. I'm cor and I'm corny. I have a corny streak where it's like yeah. a lot of that shit is just like... I do like... It scares me sometimes. I think maybe you're a spy. The only problem I have <laughs> is calling it a culture. But other oh, than that... Oh, real? <laughs> <laughs> We're the top ten country songs. We just want to go over the list. <laughs> no culture? <laughs> I just like hearing what y'all did with our shit and turn it into your shit. And yeah. Like, oh, that's pretty interesting. All right. We love stealing from the black man. This is really the number one song in um, country music, huh? Let's start with number 10. Mm. Are oh. these albums or... 
Or uh, songs. Songs. Songs? Uh, does Derek have the list? Maybe we can play a few of these. Number 10, top country song in America right now is uh, a the song. The House Next Door to Me was so... What? <laughs> no. no, that isn't? And Garth That's Brooks is list. on the list. He's still yes. doing shit. Man, there's country fans right now laughing at us. Tim McGraw. Uh, I heard of Tim McGraw. Yeah. He, he's, he's, a, he's like one of those guys who's big enough to have crossed over into my ears. But yep. he, I don't know his songs, uh, though. George right. Strait? You know George Strait? Well, I got... Uh, Man, fuck all that. Get to the... Get all right, well, I got it. The number 10 um, country song in America. Here it is. <laughs> a little taste. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> God damn motherfucker. Uh, wrecked, what is that shit? What happened? Just wrecked my own fucking You ruined bit. your bit. God damn it. Is this the chick from fucking... Is, yes, it is. Are you serious? Yes, it is. She's got the number one country song in America. Wow. You're, Harry you're Underwood. You're joking. All right, uh, the number ten country song in America. You got it, Derek? Oh, it's awful. I've heard this one, right? You know this one? Yeah. A band called uh, Little Big Town, and the song is called Boondocks. I meant Carrie Underwood's song. Oh. Yeah. Let's hear this. This is the number 10 oh, country yeah. song in America. Let's hear it, boys. <laughs> this is good cousin fucking music. <laughs> 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 it was just laughing at this shit. a sprinkle of Parsons family in there. It was, I, was, I was feeling it hey, to man. the Parsons family. Until that <laughs> harmony came in. Hey, I could feel the muddy water running through my veins. Uh, Reuben Kincaid should be right around the corner. And the man just... Man and just <laughs> Yeah, man, it's this White man. people stealing from black people again. Boondocks is our term. That's a black really? man's term. The boondocks. boondocks. The right. boonies. That's number 10. The boonies. Got the muddy water ru running through his veins. I'm with Patrice on that. that. I was kind of feeling it up until that that <laughs> harmony kicked in, and then it got a little corny. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Shields and that that that. Sha na 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 na. Sha na 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 na. Let's go with number nine. Top country songs in America. We're trying to educate ourselves. And, yeah. All right, all right. And our listeners it's out very there. good of us. There's a band called Sugarland. No clue. And the song is called Just Might Make Me Believe. What's the What's the definitive The definitive thing that makes this genre what it is like? What is the thing that makes this country music? What is that thing? You know how rap is like, uh, it's you know, hip-hop is like, you know, a, a good down, a good yeah. downbeat no. and, and a rap, you know, you know, whatever. But what's the definitive... A relatable story. <coughs> but but no, it's no, all about that sound. Relating. It's a sound. What's the sound like? like? Is it that, that draw, that steel, gu steel guitar is important. <clears throat> Some kind of like... No, I think it comes... Uh, plotting beat I, I like think it's this. all about the lyrics and the story first. But you could put these lyrics to because yeah, this doesn't sound tour. like a country song. It says, yeah, but it is. No, it you can hear country. You can just hear it. It's not like a pop. It Listen to the background. Listen to background music. It's that like bluesy thing going but if on. I, yeah, most if I most. Oh, Most sorry. country songs, I'm sorry, I, are, are are essentially mechanically the same song. You know, like they're constructed the same in terms of the way their the chord progressions go. Right. It's the story that is crafted around. So Oak's right. It's, but it's, you could put the what? story and the lyrics to a hard rock song. And You're absolutely right. And it's right. not country. Right. And right. It's not country but anymore. But Leonard Skinner had that thing. But when I listen to Freebird, I don't feel like I went over. To yeah. This is if I leave here to. It doesn't sound like this. It's it's got southern it's got southern roots in it that whole Leonard Skinner thing and so does country it's a oh, very it's bluesy the mechanics you know, of yeah. the song well, yeah, what, the what was that song about anyway I don't she know was, she, was, she she can't pay her bills she's kind of like just holding on yeah. and and this person she's in love with is the one that's gonna make her believe everything will be okay mm, she's because happy it's to, not she's about happy money to, and all she's that she's happy to be mediocre yeah but <laughs> but then she drinks her margaritas to kind of make things uh... who doesn't <laughs> all right let's drunk, go drunk mediocrity that's what that song is <laughs> let's go on to number eight we there's a bit here somewhere we're we're, we're gonna try to find our way in the middle of this here top ten uh, country songs in America. Number eight is a guy named uh, Dierks. <laughs> Dierks <laughs> Bentley. Dierks Bentley. Oh, I'm Dierks Bentley. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to my album, Coming Little Closer. <laughs> I, 
Uh, uh, DX Bentley, a pleasure to meet you. You. Think, the, you think the truckers in Alabama just just like go ahead, fellas, and they're just driving down how we go, man. These guys, they're just multi multi culture and just yeah, yeah. horse shit, and they looking up in the space, fucking somewhere it's still dark in fucking Utah, and they fucking driving down, going, man. Exactly. Don't you make fun of the girl from Sugar Land, <laughs> right? Bitchy McGillicuddy, she's a beautiful woman. Right. That was my right. goddamn wedding song, you motherfucker. <laughs> how about we play a little? game dear Spenley, come wow. a little closer wow. what do you think this song is about well it's uh, uh the there's an alien from outer space <laughs> and dear Spenley uh, teams up with uh, other people in the squad and they kill uh, the alien <laughs> i'm dear Spenley. <laughs> Dix, get to the chopper. <laughs> get down. <laughs> get down, Dix. Come on, Dix, do it now. <laughs> All right, so what what is Come a Little Closer about? <sighs> uh, Come a Little Closer? That's self-explanatory. Uh, yeah. little, little love thing going he, on. He's, uh, this, okay, ready? It's a girl. Mm hmm Yeah. It's a girl who's who he's been trying to get for a long time, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and he just wants her... To, he, she's she's wary because this is now it's, it's 2006. Bitches are wary of man God, love. Damn, this guy's. Got, this was exactly what I was gonna say. She's wary of man love, and he's just like, mm -hmm. look, I understand that um, you're a little nervous and you think I'm a wolf in sheep's clothing, but I love you. And, and come you'll see a that. Little closer. You'll see that if you just come a little closer, <laughs> you see that I'm. Dear Spentley. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Spentley. So that's what it's about, you think? That's what I say. Yeah. All right, let's uh, listen to Dear Spentley. <laughs> Come a little closer. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, it's Pink Floyd. I feel like laying you down. Ooh. It's going for the blue knot. Date rape song. <laughs> On a bed of sweet. Surrender. Well, we can work it all out. Work it all out. Uh -oh, what's this the guy problem? stinks. This guy, tell us the problem right here. Let's listen to the, what the problem there is. There ain't no. I feel like laying you down. Laying you down. I feel like laying you out. <laughs> Be more accurate. Come a little closer, baby. Need another verse. I feel like letting go. He's got a big jar of Vaseline. <laughs> He's gonna punch her in the asshole. <laughs> of everything that we were thinking too complex, Patrice. Yeah. Here's the problem. They got all kinds of problems and issues. They were in love, but this guy probably sounds like an asshole. Yeah. He Maybe pro cheated. Probably did a little Maybe cheating. With hit the, her a little with, bit. And with stuff. the waitress down at the greasy spoon. Right. <laughs> the greasy spoon. <laughs> She's willing to give up the blue knot, and, and uh, this little filly isn't. And in his simple <laughs> Dierks Bentley mind, he thinks, <laughs> once I fuck you, it's all going to be fine again. Like, I know we got problems, <laughs> baby, but just get in the bed. Wait a minute, Anthony. Get in the you, bed. You, I learned you, a thing or two from the waitress down at the Greasy Spoon. I'm going to show you, you, you what gotta, I learned. You got to take calls from the actual motherfuckers who know. Who know this stuff. Who actually know what DX is talking about. DX Bentley, <laughs> come a little closer. I'll even lick your ass. Guy go, man, you don't have a goddamn clue what he's talking about. What he's saying is. Well, let's see what Ken in New York has to say. Ken, you know this song at all? Hello? Do you Hi. Know, do you know what Dirk Bentley is talking about and come a little closer? Uh, no, not really. But uh, no. I gotta defend this country music, guys. We're not bashing country. We're really we're, not. We're basically telling you we have no fucking clue. Like what it's we kind of like little big town boondocks until yeah. they sounded like the Partridge Family. Well, yeah. You know what, guys? I, I'm from New York, born and raised, and I got into country music three or four years ago. I, I can just fucking identify it with it. I don't know what. I can't even explain it myself. Oh, uh, really? Thank you. I, I want to go to Ty in Alabama. Ty. Yeah. What's up? Hey, y'all boys taking this shit a little bit too far now, ain't you? <laughs> Damn. Y'all, it's all right when y'all messing with the spook up there. No, <laughs> y'all fucking with my music. See? Wow. <laughs> the second we hit the Midwest, it's over, Johnny. They can't take the joke now. I love when you was with the Puerto Ricans this morning and the Mexicans. That shit's funny. Hey, you got to call a spade a spade and a chick a chick. A <laughs> but you can't mess Don't with Don't fuck Dirk. with Bentley, you goddamn. Right. Yeah, but see, see, if I was a listener to this program, I'd be enjoying how clueless uh, your pals Opie, Anthony, and Patrice are when it comes to country music. Well, the whole thing is, his name is Dirk Bentley. It ain't Dirks, it's Dirk. Oh, it's Dirk. Dirks to us. Right, he right. spells it D-I-E-R-K-S. Uh, Dirk Bentley. <laughs> Does it matter? Does it really matter? All right, wait. 
Well, we got to find out what's going on. I, I think there's more to this story. So thank you, T. Or Ty. Hello. Ty, I'm thank you. you now. All right. Don't take it seriously, though. We we understand it's someone's music out there, but we're just trying to tell you we have no fucking idea. Oh, hey, look, laughing. if we was if if we was on here just trying to trying to deconstruct rap, yeah. uh -huh. okay, right, motherfucker, they'll be out there, oh, dude. Know. Let's do that. Are you in tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll do Let that. Let me tell you, I can never understand what them niggers say. Exactly. <laughs> That's what you get, but you're we're fucking that to, country music. We're trying music. to teach it, right? We're trying to, we're trying to learn. I'm trying to learn about this goofy ass music. I want to be educated. All right, tomorrow we'll do, the, we'll do the uh, opposite. We, we got to find the top ten rap songs in America. Right. We'll, Deconstruct it. I'll tell you what. We just find. We just need. I'll some do it right hit. now. <laughs> I don't even have to hear the songs. Four of them. Somebody's getting smacked, and three of them. Somebody's getting shot. That's somebody's right. Somebody's getting shot. Somebody getting. <laughs> and then in between, he's gonna talk about his rims. <laughs> and his fucking gold around his neck. And his and gold his, oh, wait a minute. Okay, if you're going to say that, I bet you there's a running theme in this horse shit, too. All right. Well, yeah. There must be a running theme Gotta into be. this. You're right. All right, let's get back to come a little closer. Cause, Dirks uh, or Dirk Bentley. Uh, <laughs> Dirk Bentley. Let's get back to the song. <laughs> And now he wants her back. He's going to fix it by fucking her. What a guy. What a guy. What a trooper. <laughs> Let's forget about all that shit I did to you. Oh, remember, I feel now. <laughs> yeah, remember the good banging I used to give you. All right, that's enough of that little uh, little ditty there. There's uh, Dear Spentley and Come a Little Closer. <laughs> some guy is just, and they don't want us to talk over because some guy is just going, man, you know. Yeah. I sure <sighs> like this song. Man, what a great song. Who's the pig with the hotties? Uh, uh, let's say, uh, let's move on to the, the next. guy? <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh... Yeah, that is a big guy. He is big. <laughs> Did Patrice just fall on the floor? <laughs> yeah, Patrice just fell on the floor. He actually, <laughs> see, it's oh. evil Opie comes out. Oh. <laughs> but you, you all right? Oh, fuck me! Get up off the floor, man. We can't pick you up if if there's a problem. Oh, oh! oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's wrong, man? Oh my God, it's, it's just perfectly said what it is. <laughs> this is fat face <laughs> with all these tins. Oh. Uh, what is she, the support team? Oof. All right, we'll get into the, the hotness that's outside the studio in a little bit, but we're in the middle of a fine, fine bit here. Oh, God. Top country songs in America. Number seven uh, is uh, good old Garth Brooks. Yeah. And Good Ride Cowboy. All right. What's this song about? Oh, hold up. We got to figure it out? Yeah, we got to figure it out. Yeah. But it's Garth, so it's probably just about being a cowboy. Just having a good time. Yeah, good time, fun. Oh, it sounds fun already. Nothing bothers me. All right, so I don't get it. Yeah, that's the that's a nice that's one of those yeah. things they do their uh, their variation of the electric slide. What, what, what oh, those yeah, crackers yeah. do? They what do they call the, it? Uh, line dance. Line, line dance. dance. No, that's a little crack a line dance on there. Where they like lift their boot and give it a tap <laughs> with their foot and, and then all turn and balu and the girls with the skirts and the cowboy the skirts boots and, and the bunts. horrendous <laughs> hairdos. But do these tickle tickle. Fucking a good time, dad. Make me like this shit. Right. Sell it. Don't just come and go, oh, watch your mouth there, <laughs> nigga. Make up. That song sounded fun, that's all. Steve, Steve knows what that song's Steve about. Steve likes that's, fucking country, huh? I do. That, that was a, I think that's a tribute song to the late Chris Ledoux, who uh, died of cancer last year, I believe. Who was he? Oh, is this Chris Ledoux was another, was another singer. And I he was a good Lydia. good old cowboy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, uh, I'm, type of I'm Chris I Ledoux. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move on because we want to we wanna try to get through this here. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> top country songs in America. You we're sold out Chris Ledoux. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to educate ourselves here today. <laughs> Let's, uh, oh, I can't get enough of that shit. I love Arnold. Let's say hi to uh, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw. Uh, my old popular. friend. What, what's my old friend about? Um, His dog. This could be... Oh, very good. His dog? His this dog. This could be... Now, uh, Tim McGraw, <clears throat> son of Tug McGraw. Right. Uh, Tug died. Uh, I guess they hadn't known each other for a long time. This could be... A father about his dad. About his dad. My old friend. I say it's about an inanimate object. It's either it's not a human. It's either a truck. Yeah. His favorite truck. 
his um his fucking uh, dog. Yeah. Maybe his I don't know tug I don't know Tim that well. I would say his gun or something, but probably not his gun. Not his gun. <laughs> but something like a truck. His old friend that never lets him down. Yeah. And it's never a human being that never lets you down. All right. Ah. It's always something else that let something humans new. let you down, but not your fucking. Not, not your old, not your old, old, your old, board, your old yeah, Chevy, your old or, thing with the thing in the, right. in the over there. So yeah. you're saying some type of machine thing. Opus saying some <laughs> his old hound dog, and I'm saying it's going to be maybe dear old dad that has nothing right. to do with a woman, right? No woman. No, no uh, woman no in woman. this one. Right. No. Tim no McGraw, woman. my old friend. Let's take a listen. This memory. This old friend. No, Patrice. I right, pause it. Pause it. Patrice got something. I'm telling you, listen. It's hanging on his wall. It, 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 he's do He's being clever. It was since I dusted off. No one dust off their fucking buddy. You understand? <laughs> you think it, he's he dusted off the thing? There's a, it's a thing. I'm telling you. You well, think what it's is still it? gonna be a thing? I, I don't fucking know. It's hanging Maybe on the, the wall. Maybe in the car he talks about Maybe it. Maybe it's pictures of memories of him and a friend. I think it's his old friend. That he just doesn't call anymore. Just a buddy? Maybe no. we're overthinking it again. Maybe a, maybe a friend he doesn't know how to quit. <laughs> I don't know how to quit you. You know what? If this when we was on Brokeback Mountain, <laughs> I was fucking you in the ass. <laughs> if if this doesn't if this doesn't turn into something clever that like you said making then the rest of these songs. Whatever it says, if it says Sugar Land, I want to say it's about sh sugar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No more credit to country music if this motherfucker's talking about his, just his buddy. All right, let's let's hear. Let's go. Back to someone saying it's a deer head on his wall. Done. That's Done with it? That. I, no, it's, I don't care. It it's, didn't even say what. I not. I think it's about uh, the fact that Tim used to have some fine friends, and then he became this huge country superstar, and mm. he kind of <clears throat> didn't forget about his friends, but didn't have time for his friends because he was too busy traveling America, becoming this huge country star, and realized, oh my God, my old my friend. old he friend. would never my right old saw friend. Yeah, he old to some guys friends. that he left because he got famous. Could be. I don't know. Jesus, he didn't say anything. It was vague. Yeah, yeah. And if he, if that was to his old friends, they're so vague they wouldn't sit there and go, Ah, oh, Tim, remember me? It's like, yeah. who the fuck is he talking about? Who? Right. What? All right, let's go to number five, <laughs> top country songs in America. Brad Paisley featuring Dolly Parton. Holy uh, shit! Brad Paisley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Brad Paisley. Pleasure to meet you. Arnold, what is this song about? I, I, this is uh, called When I Get Where I'm Going, I'm Going to Kill Something. <laughs> uh, featuring uh, Dolly Parton. Really? Dolly Parton's in this one? Yeah, When I Get Where I'm Going. What's this about? Where I Get. When I get where I'm going. Is it a uh, physical trip or is it something that's going on? I'm going to keep it simple. Spiritual. It's a spiritual, it's spiritual. trip. He's I, on, I, right? I got to get I still give it credit. Come yeah. on. Come on, country Guy's music. a trucker and he's hauling something and he's, when he gets I'm where he's on, going, <laughs> I'm going to get paid and buy some beer. I'm on Route 66, headed to Route 82. That's where I'm going. And when I get there... I get paid. <laughs> I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Peter Belt is running. <laughs> when I get where I'm going. <laughs> when I get where I'm going. All right. It's a spiritual journey he's on, I'm, I, I'm thinking. I, I'll say spiritual. Spiritual? Uh, I'm walk with my granddaddy. Oh, he's got cancer. Oh, boy. Oh, he's got the big C. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Come on, man. God no, damn. No, no, say that. He's giving a positive spin to cancer. No fucking way. Especially he's going to be uh, up there with granddaddy. Ugh. But don't worry about him. He's going to be all right. I didn't see this guy. He's going to be with granddaddy. All right. All right. Enough of the cancer song. That guy's not dying. That's a dying song. Let's go to Amanda in Brooklyn. Amanda. Good morning. What's uh, the Brad Paisley, uh, Dolly Parton song all about? Well, usually the um, the newer country stars like to link up with an old one to do some type of tribute song or something like that, and it's pretty much about going to heaven and what it's going to be like. It's pretty basic. That one's an easy one. Yeah. 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 It's not, he's not dying. No, I was just talking about what it's going to be like when you get there, just dreaming about it, I think. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, I know. Pretty depressing. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. 
Let's uh, move on to number uh, four here. We're almost done. <clears throat> Billy wow. Currington. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Currington. Wow. Uh, that was a movie I did in '96. Uh, I was Billy Currington. <laughs> <laughs> Song's called "Must Be Doing Something Right." Must be doing something right. This is him. Counting his a blessings. Yep, this is, is what it is. This Look, is an I absolute a, love song. I got a girl. Uh, she's wonderful. He's maybe got a good career. He's got this. I must be doing something. Yeah, right. no, life is good. It's right. just about the love of his life. Just a girl. You think it's just, just a girl? Just a girl. Must be doing something. Absolutely, right. just all right, about a girl. All right, that's I say good. I say it's general blessing. General blessing. Yep. I say it's general blessing. He's got to be in the position he's in because mm -hmm. you never heard of it. This guy's new, and it's like thank you. To show business for like letting him do his dream. Uh huh. No girl. All right. There's no girl involved. Not a I'm girl. Saying he this has is another, all about. He has another girl somewhere. A love life. Okay. Must be doing something right. Is a touch of your hand. Yeah, the back of it. <laughs> no. Must be doing something right. I just heard that. Is this Don't this know what I did. Ugh, all right. Really bad uh, stuff. I told you it was all about a girl. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. All about a girl. He he figured out. I can sing to this guy. It's like this guy he figured out a smooth voice. Yeah. He figured out it's not all about the fucking. He figured out it's the little things you yeah, do. Yeah, the little things, the little hand holding and fucking and the little kisses on the neck. You rub, know, rub the clit in a counterclockwise motion. <laughs> it's about the little things. <laughs> right. A little spit on the tip and just rub it slow so it doesn't fucking <laughs> scratch. <laughs> clip your fingernails. <laughs> I think he's talking about. I think. clip my fingernails <laughs> like just the other day. When I touch your vulva, I make sure my hands are clean. <laughs> <laughs> I touch your vulva with clean hands. <laughs> I touch your vulva with clean hands. Well, I've been at the coal mine all day, <laughs> and my nails was a little dirty today. <laughs> I took the brush and cleaned them out real well. Now I'm touching your vulva tonight <laughs> with clean hands. <laughs> what a duet with Dolly Parton. Touching your vulva tonight. You'll be touching my vulva tonight. Everybody. <laughs> you want to do a duet? I'll be, I'll be Dolly Parton touching my vulva tonight. You play. I'll be touching, touching your vulva tonight with clean hands. You'll be touching your vulva tonight. And here come the lighters. <laughs> the lighters are out. <laughs> Everyone's swaying back and forth in concert. Uh, Wit clean hands. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, very caring. Uh, Raquel, what's up? You guys are killing me with this crap. I <laughs> country music. And you guys are killing me. Uh, see, there's, oh a, there's a way to listen to country music. Oh, I hate country music. But have you noticed that it always goes, with country music, it goes from one extreme to the other. You have like a... a party life and then it goes to somebody dying yeah i absolutely hate country music uh, yeah there's no real in between all right thank you uh, yeah but that but we nailed that song it's about touching the vulva right <laughs> yeah with clean hands with clean with hands clean hands <laughs> 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 that was with clean hands. You heard it here on the country station. <laughs> with clean hands. That's with, the name of the song. With clean hands. With clean hands. <laughs> oh, my God. That one's just taking off. <laughs> What do you think this is about? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe it's about, you know, guy who was, you know, he killed somebody and now he's trying to, you know, refine himself. He's Redeem washing his hands himself. of all the bullshit right, he's ever right. done. Nope. He was bad and now he's cleaning his hands and his soul of the, no, nope. he's touching our vulva with clean hands. With clean hands. I got a song for Grey Wolf to record. <laughs> Touching my vulva tonight. Ah, <laughs> uh, Croc. Uh, I, we told you we'd find our, our way around this bit. Uh, don't worry about it. Croc, uh, what's up? All right. 
We lost Croc? I don't know. Something's a little weird with the phones today. We lost Croc. <laughs> All right, the next country song, top country songs in America. Number three is uh, Trace Atkins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my buddy on the uh, chopper left mission was Trace Atkins. I'm Billy Currington. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Trace Atkins. <laughs> We're to drop into the drop zone at midnight. Me and Trace Atkins will take the left side. And I want uh, uh, DX Bentley <laughs> to outflank the enemy. Put Brad, don't forget about Brad Paisley. Well, Brad Paisley is my right hand man. You will get on the big gun. Holy shit. Uh, well, I, well, Trace Atkins has a song. It's uh, number three in the country as far as country songs go. It's a uh, honky tonk, but dunk a donk. Oh my uh -oh. God! Wow, they've incorporated yeah. some uh, urban langu uh, language. Honky donk. Why not? Honky tonk, but donk a donk. And I know it's sarcastic. It's gotta be. It's yeah. a sarcastic fucking shot at at, at, at rap like that. Right. But, but now, this real but dunk a donk is, is honky down tonk. here in hula hula fucking Minnesota, wherever the fuck I'm from. It, you, oh, it's gonna geez. be very upbeat. Yeah. Well, the colored folk came up with this word, <laughs> but we're stealing it now. Well, it's a honky tonk, but donkey donk. Honky tonk, but donkey. It's honky tonk. That's what I said. It's a honky tonk, but donkey donk. And we're donking on a horn of hell. <laughs> the song's gonna show that it ain't cool with the colored folk no more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, shit. I hear it is. Trace Atkins, Honky Tonk, but Donkey Donk. <laughs> I don't think this is it. <laughs> the house next door to me has been sold to niggers. They claim to be wild Indians from the plains. Oh, but they ain't. Black people we'll are claiming to be Indians. Oh, God damn. Oh, wow. That oh, was the latest God. from Trace Adkins. <laughs> <laughs> with a bullet. Well, that was number one with a bullet. <laughs> and you number know one with a noose. A bullet. <laughs> number one with a noose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's play the real Trace oh. Adkins, Honky Tonk, Badonka. Yeah, conk, it's going to be very upbeat. Got a ghetto ass. Okay, <laughs> song. But don't get down. Yeah. Kind of like this one. Got to oh. call the sheriff. Her ass is so hot. <laughs> Did you hear that? Put all the cops on her ass. God, this is no crime in that town. Starting all kinds of trouble at the local uh, gin mill down there. <laughs> she comes in. The guys are getting slapped by their girls. They got to look at that ass. All right, here we go. One more to the hook. The, the white girls had a little shake now in their line. Yeah. There. That one little badunk and donk turn. They got to show that ass. I guarantee the dance is all about some kind of ass shake. Oh, yeah. It's a new line dance going on somewhere. All right. The honky tonk badunk and gonk gonk gonk. <laughs> We're almost oh. done here. Oh. Number two, hot country songs, the top country songs in America. Good old George Strait. <laughs> she let herself go. This oh, could go a lot of ways. Oh, my God. All right, what does she let herself go on? That bitch, you know, <laughs> to be hot. <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, the, the, the comeback song for uh, Honky Tonk Bonk. Honky Tonk Bonk. Tonk Bonk. Tonk my girl used to have one of those things that Tracy was talking about, but this bitch is fat and stick now, and I'm going to take her out back and hit her with a pipe. <laughs> she took for granted her Honky Tonk but oh, Donkey Donk. <laughs> she figured she could eat a few Twinkies and nothing was going to happen to her, oh, but donk a donk. Man. But she let herself go. <laughs> How is he going to make this positive? Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, you know they're going to turn it around. All country songs end positively. I made her sleep in the yard in one of those big tires I got back there. <laughs> so how does this song go? She let herself go. They, they met. Uh, she was all hot. And a few years go by, and she just let herself go. Absolutely not. And no. Is, and is this George Strait going to say something like, and that's okay? Absolutely no. not. No. He, he, she let herself go. 
uh, she let she she fell in love with him. You're thinking. I I know. You're I, thinking. I, I refuse to believe these country motherfuckers will not like say do do some clever wordplay where he, there's no way he's talking about how his fucking girl got fat. She used to weigh 115, <laughs> now she's 275. <laughs> she let herself go. Bounce. Don't let she right. let herself go. <laughs> she's as big as a truck. I don't want to fuck because she let herself go. <laughs> <laughs> she let herself go. <laughs> Even when I wash my hands, I don't want to touch her vulva. <laughs> Cause it's dirty. She got a dirty vulva. <laughs> she used to wash her vulva. It's too but dirty she for let my herself hands. go. She's the size of a Volvo. She let herself go. <laughs> All right, so she obviously let herself go. Is he okay with this? No, he's not okay with this. Oh, no way. A song. It's a country about song. Him he's okay with this. When his fat woman is okay, there's no. Fucking He's going to say that I'm beauty's sticking to my guns. Because beauty's a, inside, a not outside. A monkey tongue, oh. but donka dunk is could not be the next song underneath. Mm -hmm. She's a fat bitch. This song is. <laughs> <laughs> this is song. A she's a fat bitch, is, and he's okay with that. That's this, what this song's about. It's not, it can't get, You're saying she finally $10. let herself go $10. and $10. is now into him. I bet ten dollars. I, I guarantee $10 this is not about a fat bitch. Huh? I guarantee this is not about a fat girl. This is not a, his girl did not fucking get fat. You can't. I'm going to tell you what I mean. The third song is Hunky Tonk but Dunk Dunk, right? Right. The people are saying that the second song is George Strait, who is a known motherfucker, <laughs> is not going to say and have the second leading song in the world. Rappers don't have songs about you fat bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this George Strait is Yo, hardcore. Check this out, son. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not a snitch, but I don't like that fat bitch. You better get out my face, ho, and go to the motherfucking store and <laughs> <I'm telling laughs> let herself go. This bitch let herself go, son. You guys now, are you're no so wrong. fucking way he's talking about a fat girl. This is talking about how beauty's on the inside. I guarantee All right. It. Let's uh, hear it. Okay. Let's right. hear it. Right. And it's going to be pathetic when... Uh, when we find out. I that's, know. What I, that's what I'm thinking. I, and what did you say? I say it's just what it is. She let herself go. <laughs> this bitch mix. was hot when he met her, and now she's a fat piece of shit. <laughs> that would isolate <laughs> the female country fans. Don't though. matter. No, f that's the what I'm saying. The fatties are buying these records. This is the, the fatties are buying these records. This is the number two uh -huh. country song above Honky Tonk but Dunk a Dunk, which is a shout out. To, so hot to asses fucking, everywhere. These yeah. redneck girls with these scrawny booties, right? Okay? They're trying to teach their women. George Strait, who is a... a I've heard of him, so he's yeah. a mainstream fucking he's guy. He's been in the biz for a while. There's George. no way he wrote a song oh my that God. my bitch is I feel is so fat. good about this one. All right, let's hear it. This is a bitch that's fat. He don't care. Let's Beauty's on the inside. Fuck Hit that. it. that. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Sounding sensitive. Be in trouble. Yeah, this is, this is no this party is not, song, this boys. Is not a <laughs> song. This is no party song. Honky tonk, but donk donk. <laughs> when he said goodbye. What? Hey, come on, I'm in. You're in so I'll far. Hold on. I'll do some crying. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Let herself go. <laughs> She's a hoe. She's a hoe. Fucking everybody. I told you. All right. Fat bitch. All right. Hold on. Hold on. He dissed her. And pro he might have dissed her for being fat, but he's not saying that. This is a, a, an, an empowering woman song. She let herself go. I, I don't want that if we bet. I thought I was in. <laughs> Motherfucker. She's a hoe. There's no way he was writing about a fat bitch. He obviously didn't take the relationship that no. seriously. That's right. This is the cleverness I was looking for in country music. There you go, Let me George. tell you something, though. I'm feeling from, from, from what he's saying that she was a piece of shit. To, but her, he, to her husband, right, maybe. But right. he never made that clear. And then when he ditched her because she was, you know, he come home, she's ironing in the pants, she's got the kids, she's fat ass. And he ditches her, she hots herself up at the spa and, and starts fucking everybody. Wordplay. It was wordplay. Yeah. She she and not fucking everybody. It was like she was a good woman. 
This is his song. If she was a good woman, this nigga didn't appreciate her, yeah. got on the road, and then she's like, you know what? I'm going to make myself better. This is an empowering woman. So I, she let herself go. Go and be a better person. Post bag. No way. You, no way the number two song. And that's a number two fucking wow. pop ass song. <laughs> I'm not happy about that. No, I really wasn't because I thought, you know, he's ditching her at the beginning of the song. I'm like, I'm in. The yeah. fat bitch song is on the B side. In 1950, <laughs> she let herself go. And the other side is that fat bitch. This is why I let her go. <laughs> like, like Roxanne, Roxanne. That's the real. <laughs> All right, let's go to Jim in Wisconsin. Jim, what's up? Yeah, that uh, honky tonk for donkey donk. You guys hit that right on the head. If, if you see the video, it's all about a bunch of guys in a bar and a girl shaking their ass. It's, you hit it right on the head. Yeah, oh, right on, man. It's the country party song of the year. Mm -hmm. All right. Out. Thank you, sir. Let's go to Bill in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Bill, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey man. Make it fast, Bill. Uh, long time listener, first call. I used to be a country DJ, and I think you guys are, are like trying to dig a little too deep and figuring these songs out. Because these, none of these people are, very few of them anyway, write their own songs to begin with. And if it's a band, very rarely does the band actually play on the song itself. It's studio musicians. Yeah. All right. Well, Let Herself Go is, uh, she Let Herself Go is, is definitely work, good wordplay there. Yeah. Tony, Tennessee. <clears throat> hey, man, y'all are killing me this morning. Uh -huh. We are right up amongst all this redneck music. And the hypocrisy in that if it was... You know, Jay Z singing some of the lyrics is being sung. People would be freaking out on a lot of this stuff. You oh, know, man, a black guy could easily sing a song called "She Let Herself <laughs> yeah. Go." By the way, oh, hi yeah. baby. The video stops. Uh, hi baby, what's up? Who's this fat bitch? Right. Oh shit, it's my girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bitch, you let yourself go. <laughs> right. <laughs> God, absolutely. You let yourself motherfucking they, go. <laughs> they bring it right at you. They don't. They don't do wordplay. Oh shit. All right, let's get to the number one country song in America. It's uh, lovely Carrie Underwood from American wow. Idol. Carrie Underwood. Wow. She's got the number one song in America now, huh? Wow. That American Idol does good things. Good yeah, things. this wow. is um, wow. Jesus Take the Wheel. Wow. I've heard this one. Is this the one that uh, a lot of controversy with American Idol? Because uh, apparently they want. Um, no, it's not. I'm that's, an asshole, Travis. That's is that Kelly what you're Clarkson. Yeah, that's Kelly, Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, Kelly Clarkson. You would think they would want this number one song though for this season, right? Yeah, oh well. So Carry on to what Jesus take, take the, the wheel. wheel. Ugh. Well, there you go. This is See, your life is so, so bad. out of control and you you just you just lost it lost it all. Just let you got to put your faith in God. Doesn't it sound like mm. it should be that? That's not it? No. It's no. literal. It's literal. It's, it's literal. Jesus Grab the wheel. Why? She get I all, can't it's a, fucking it's drive. A it's a tribute to her. her she thing. got all fucked up. Her American Idol thing. It's a tribute to like her is. dreams coming true. No, no. I mean, I'm driving. I'm fucking. Can up. you take the wheel and, and from here, me? He, what? Why? Uh, the car, car is skidding. Is, uh, but is she Jesus, drunk? Jesus. Oh, literally. The Jesus, is get on the anti-lock brakes. <laughs> so there's a Puerto Rican in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so really, this is Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> I have no idea. You don't know what it's I'm about? I'm saying it's literal. No. no, Jesus, no. take the wheel. Her life no yes. needs a little, yeah. a little uh, uh, spiritual help. Not needs. Jesus, put it in four wheel drive. This is a thank it's you. Snowing. She already had her help. This is a thank you. She doesn't. This bitch is not coming out. You're saying. trying to tell me that Jesus is a designated driver. Jesus, my tranny lights on. <laughs> what do I do? Jesus, I need oil. <laughs> It's about Jesus. Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> Jesus check the alternator. <laughs> Jesus slow down, you're making me nervous. You're driving too fast. Oh, this is You this might is... be immortal, but I could still hurt my ass. We like leaving on an up note, but this is gonna be very obvious, very boring and and, and we're just going to have to... Uh, you might be immortal. <laughs> you might be immortal, motherfucker. You're all right. But I'm scared shitless here in the left-hand lane. You drive like you're insane. This is going to be Jesus. like this is going to be like that dumb poem with uh, the four fucking foot footprints. footprints. And then there's two. And where were and you I when I really needed you? Well, that's when I was carrying you. That's what this song is all so, about. So, so far, what Swimming. is... what? Would you agree with this list? Should, would you p reverse anything, put anything? Yeah, we don't it's know. It's all the same it's to me. Same. This is know the this same shit. stuff. I think Billy Currington. Ah, I ah. think Billy Currington is, is, is good. All right, let's go yeah. to carry on the word and get this over with. Right. Jesus, take the wheel. 
number one country song in America. <clears throat> Jesus, take the wheel. Did he take the wheel, though? Did he take the goddamn wheel? Let's listen and find out. <laughs> no, apparently not. <laughs> You know, have a little survival instinct and steer into the skid, you stupid bitch. Oh, yeah. wow. Stop giving false hope to everybody was, out there with your number one song. Literally, she, Jesus. Well, I it. believe it's been a hard year, and, and literally, she wants, you know, Jesus take the wheel. But figuratively speaking, I think she's giving herself up to Jesus she's right here at this moment. The low point in her life. Oh, oh, see, now she's not skidding anymore, but she's still saying. She has just surrendered her life to Jesus. And as far as the life goes, does that work out? No, that didn't work out either. It sounds like it, it worked out. It's a shame. Did she die in this song? No. Oh, she, she made did. it. She believes in her faith, and look, it, it did her well. She sounds good, though. I think she no. should, she uh, sing. I think she should pray to uh, Goodyear Tire, because that seemed to be what saved her in that situation. <laughs> Jesus, take him. I carry it, Underwood. Maybe the bitch should stop uh, putting on makeup as she drives. <laughs> she would have been all right. <laughs> Jesus took the wheel. But there wow. you go. The Lord wow. and Savior. I have learned things. and she, I... she had Jesus in her back pocket. Jesus pulled one of those, like, 180 mm. moves, <laughs> spins the car, puts it back in drive. <laughs> he jumped out the window, did a roll. Oh, it was great. He jumped over the drawbridge. It's driving like it's the Italian job <laughs> <laughs> through the sewers. Uh, that Jesus can drive. Jesus can listen to the saves. Yeah, this worked. It clicks. <laughs> He's <a> yeah. cracker. <laughs> this worked out very well. So the listeners got to remind us to bring this bit back when it's a whole bunch of brand new brand songs. Brand new ones. Because these songs will stay in that list for a long time. So maybe a couple months down the Where road. Where was Jesus uh, when Dale Earnhardt was driving? Holy shit. Where the hell was Jesus then? <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Nope. 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 Sorry, Sorry, pal. Nope. I I'm too busy saving some other bitch that can't drive on a, a, <laughs> Sorry a light uh, sheet of ice. <laughs> Sorry there, number three. Uh, a lot of people are saying, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, because Jesus made a joke. She said, take the wheel. He goes, you want me to come and shoot her? <laughs> yeah, what? exactly. Like, Why? Jesus, take the wit. No, I'm busy here. I made a little joke. Oh, my God. Mm -mm -mm. That was good. Well, there was some couple of songs there that I can get into. I know yeah. Oh, the Honky Tonk Padonk. Uh, honky Tonk Padonk. Yeah, yeah, I want to see the video. I can't and uh, little, boond uh, little Big Town with Boondocks. Uh, well, she, she let herself go. Let's be honest, too. That's let herself go. That Evil was Self Go was good. Evil man. Trucker from Dallas. Evil Trucker. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, man. I hope you fucking know who this is. It's Max. What's up, Evil? What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, I got a question for big baby girl Patrice. Have you ever heard of uh, Cowboy Troy? I want to say to play Cowboy Troy for Patrice. No. Yeah, he's a country rap singer. He's got a song uh, called yeah. I Play Chicken with the Train. Bla black guy? Yeah. Wow. All right, we got a little piece oh. of that. Hold on the line. Let's uh, listen to this really fast. This is... Uh, I play chicken with the train. Cowboy. Like a chugga, like a chugga, like a... Ooh, the big black man coming through you. Boy, you the bell and bumped your head. You uh, talking about a motherfucker who has to perform with a chicken cage in front of his fucking shit? Dude, that shit. That's not rapping. That's, that's, that's commercial rap. It he, doesn't work. That's rapping Rodney rapping. It's country rapping. and rap. As he goes down to fucking Porky's <laughs> shack Por on... Porky. <laughs> Porky's shithole. What's up, Rednecks? Give it whoa. Yeah. 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 Throw your hands in the boots. Yeah. All Why right. don't you do us a little soft shoe? <laughs> Dude, oh. I... Hit him up. <laughs> Raw hot. I got into one country song on yeah. vacation. I was in the, the Grand Cayman Islands. And driving around with a rental and trying to find anything to listen to on the on the nice. radio. You've made enough excuses. I know, I know, <laughs> yeah. And it was just strange that there was a country uh, uh, station mm -hmm. on the island because it's all, it's very dark. You, you boys don't... Dark how? Like the, the sun goes down dark? Or no, people black people dark. Jesus fuck. <laughs> but you got, hold on, you got to know your audience. Are and they I'm... all listening to country music? <laughs> Holy shit. And I was catching shit I know, before. God damn. That's They're all describing. dark. The island's too dark for yeah. a country station. Harlem is very dark. What? Oh, With the lights out? How many people you know? The
listen to country music. It's a chocolate it's island. Fun. I'm just saying, there's a lot of black people. I didn't understand it's, dark. It was dark. In the beginning, there was darkness. <laughs> what? A lot of niggas? <laughs> <laughs> so I was surprised that they had a country station because, you know, knowing radio, you got to know your audience. Why would you throw a country station in the Grand Cayman Islands? Well, like everybody it's not says, people it's, that it's, would listen to country you can, music. You can relate to it. It's the story. All right. Right. Oh, fuck it. And there was a song called uh, Billy's Got His Beer Goggles On. That's the song I liked. Billy got his beer goggles? Billy got his beer goggles on, yeah. It's got an island feel to it, though. Yeah, they, they play this like... Oh, yeah. Power rotation. Billy's got the beer goggles on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <I'm> hey! <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Got all these problems, but he don't give a shit. He's oh fucked up. I wonder. See, this is what kid. This right now is, is so painful to think that there. You know, there's a lot of white people out there, or whoever. Yeah. That when they listen to rap, it just sounds the same to them as fucking this country shit sounds to me. Like it just, just that uh, wham, went the bamp, and they just hear the yeah. same song over and over in their heads. The and you don't want them to. You want them to love it. The girls have to leave at ten. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, we got some girls coming in. Yeah. Well, we were going to break, but if they have to leave at 10, these girls have been uh, waiting outside the studio wondering, we, wondering why we uh, didn't get them right in. Yeah. Wait, what? There's a little... Uh... <laughs> Wait, what happened? Uh, we have a guest. And I just don't think it's in his best interest to maybe be on camera. Why? What guest? Wait, will you let me in on this? Write it down. It's a whole thing that just happened. Hey, girls. Hello. Hi. Oh. Is that a problem? Like incomplete action wear. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, we. Hi, ladies. Oh, well. We got girls. Girls in the studio. Girls in the studio. <laughs> Were you enjoying the radio? I, we didn't mean to make you wait that long, but we were on a roll there with the country music and stuff. It sounded funny. It sounded funny? It was entertaining, I'll say. Thank you very much. Definitely. Ooh, look at that. We're entertaining. <laughs> you guys are on the webcam. Why did two black girls outside like fucking niggas? Yeah, what's up with the black girls? They weren't hot enough? Um, no, one's our tour manager. I'll bring these bitches in here so I can have some fucking fun. I'm gonna... They don't want to be in here. Yeah, Bonita. bring her in. Bonita. Oh, look at my five light bulbs. My eyes are full. My cornea are burning. <laughs> <laughs> bring something to fucking lower the, the fucking... <laughs> you don't lower know... the tungsten down in this motherfucker. Jeez. <laughs> you know how pathetic we are, man? We got girls from the lingerie bowling studio, and one of them's wearing a <laughs> winter coat <laughs> over her lingerie. <laughs> yeah. That's how scared Hi. they are of us. <laughs> With the yes, words. Like no. A cheerleader. I'm no. a tour manager. Oh, we no, thought uh, you were. No. Oh, wow. But she could be. Fit in very nicely. Go back. No, I'm just, no. Well, I want to look. No, at maybe you can help oh, us. Hi, hi. Maybe, you can help, <laughs> maybe you can help explain what's going on. Oh, this is a lingerie bulldog lingerie ball, mm -hmm. and we're um, going to be playing some serious football February 5th. Super Bowl LA, Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday halftime, pay per view. Pay per view. Check it out. So awesome half time, fight. instead of watching some in lousy this half one in the back show, is trouble. Exactly. you tune in, the one you in get the coat, to see hot girls. Hot girls in lingerie. <laughs> the one in the coat is the fucking cunt. Like, she's the asshole. <laughs> she's she's yeah. not control. She's out of control. She's the only one without a phony fucking smile plastered on her face. She hates this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got dreams and aspirations, don't you, dear pudding pops, huh? <laughs> well, give them up and go down the road of hell like the rest of these fucking girls here. Stop trying to have dignity. I'm going to wear a coat. I'm not just about tits and smiling, you motherfuckers. And you know why it's true? Her friends are laughing at her. Get rid of her. She's no, bringing your whole porno down. group down. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can fucking sniff it. Look at her. She's just like, Patrice. All right, let, excuse me. Allow me to retort. <laughs> well, let the girl know. Perhaps. Know the, the the air conditioning is so fucked up in this place all the time well, it's that a, it's chilly. It's not affecting Blondie. Thank you. <laughs> the girl is... Everybody has different temperatures. The girl is beautiful. We've been outside in the crazy cold weather in New York. We're, right. we're, we're from California. We're not used to that. Yeah. It's net... Oh, oh, boy. boy. <laughs> they're, they're, and she, what she's doing now? Patrice. She, ah, she does that every time you come out. Get rid of her. But she... Fu 
She does that every time. Yeah. She brings it. So down. you do that every time. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Now they're gonna act like they heard about it. That girl is fine. Right. I would love. What was her name? What was Danielle. her name? Danielle. Danielle. She's a beautiful, I, fine gorgeous. girl. I will say else. Beautiful. She's a classy, just, very nice girl. And of she's course. Did, did, did you hear? The, what's your name again, Pumpkin? Benita. Did you hear? Benita has. She has a script in her head that she says all the time when she has to cover no, up for Miss Jacket. <laughs> Well, we were disappointed no, that I... she came in with a winter coat over her lingerie. Well, she's cold. She's but you're not cold. No, why I'm from Michigan originally. She's from Michigan. I can also, make it. Also, it depends where you were born, I guess. You got you're naked. I I am partly naked. Yeah, they got their tops on yeah. and their yeah. tight jeans. Yeah. Disappointed about the coat. And you no. and you e rock go and interview you're black, her. And you know how we don't like the fucking cold. Like the now now this well, lovely well, young lady here is wearing some type of uh, outerwear, coat. but yeah. but at least no, it's a it's sexy coat. coat. Yes, it's, a, it's an inviting. I am yeah. chilly, but I'm still in the fucking character coat. Yes. Exactly. She put on fucking uh, Spanky from the fucking our gang coat. Came in here with this. You, everybody here, look at this girl. She can't stop smiling. She's she a trooper. Put a surgery She's a smile egg. on. She's a sexy bitch. And we, we call her a good. Egg. <laughs> she is. She, but the she's one in the back. Playing the role. She stood in the you back. You are one I of the know. most misogynistic, <laughs> women-hating <laughs> sons of bitches. Let's, let's talk about. I've ever seen. After we seen. talk about the lingerie bowl, let's talk about why you hate women. Wait, Patrice, you hate women. Oh, <laughs> we know. <laughs> I'm with Patrice, though. No. We called her out on nope. it. Nope. And that's why she left. Cause because if it, people... If it, she was being righteous, she wouldn't have left. She'd be like, oh, no. e right, go like talk it. to the girl. You said the C uh, word. Hold on. You jumped to conclusions. All right. I forgot. Um, let me All explain right. something. Wait, wait. To, we're going to talk to her. Let me explain something to life real quick that people don't know. Huh? Cunt yeah, is the is the bitch for black girl. You call a gr black girl a bitch, it gets the same reaction if you call a white girl a cunt. Now, cunt to a black girl is not that right. offensive, but cunt to a white girl. All right. So, yes, that's the biggest so word. Was, that's I a bomb. I, I was saying it because I call my I call my girl a cunt sometimes, but it, right. she's I don't black, doubt so it that. doesn't it doesn't fuck with her like that. <laughs> so I didn't mean to like make her go because you call me a cunt, but I want to let her know that I can smell her vibe and that you came in and you're always playing good cop for her horse shit. No, you're no. absolutely positively wrong. I don't see that at all. E Wait, what happened? I see you as a woman-hating man who had a pick on one of these beautiful <laughs> I, girls. I like that. Yeah, I see that too. Hold on, yeah, we got E Rock back. Right. In, hold on, we got E Rock back in the studio. You might be right. You oh, might be right. We were e trying to get her word on this whole thing because you chased her out of the studio. Yeah. E Rock went outside the studio, yeah, so and she, what she, happened? She's gonna come back in. You're gonna make it up. To I'm her. not gonna. No, she I'm left. Gonna feel it. What? I feel she left. She walked oh, out. Jesus. She wanted nothing to do with this and walked out. And and she wanted nothing to do with it in the fucking first place. Nigga, I'm telling. I know shit like that. She didn't want to come in here. Tell the truth, Benita. Tell the motherfucking truth. Oh, she, I, man. I gave her an excuse Benita, to fucking leave. Benita's like, damn, now I got to replace a, a girl. I'm not, how am I going to find a hot girl in job. two weeks? Hi. Oh, my Thank God. You. No, I'm just, don't, I'm just, just joking. Just don't make me look like a no. complete dick. Someone get a phone and let's talk no. to this girl. She's running out of the studio now. I'm not going to talk. No, no, I don't think you're getting a She's, comment. I, I will say nothing else. I'll sit there like, I'll sit there and shut my face. Oh, great. Let us pick up the pieces? No, I, I'm saying, uh, I'll <laughs> defend myself, but I didn't want her to run out, but I'm <coughs> saying that she, before she came in here, she didn't, and I can tell, you can't see his, it's oh, not really, Criswell, <laughs> the great Preskin, he's like telling me, this one when she woke it's, up, no, no. The, the one with the sexy winter co coat on, uh -huh. she keeps looking around with like, oops, he caught her on her face. No, I didn't. She knows. These girls, no. you know, regardless. Wait, that one's laughing. <laughs> you got her. She's on your side. The one in the tiny blue top's oh. on your side, Patrice. Um, the no. only. I don't know. I'm sorry. Listen, the only tell brunette I'm sorry. you chased I'm her sorry. out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell for... on, on the air. I'm, so, I'm sorry for saying cunt to her. I really am. And you're I, also so sorry using... for. No, he, he sees himself as completely right. You want to apologize <laughs> for that. Okay, look. I didn't want her to run out. I, you know, I could be abrasive. I, tell her I'm sorry. She tell her I'm sorry. Bit, I, I am sorry. It's a bit much. Well, tell her. What but do I need to do? What do I need to do for her? Hold on, Patrice. Okay. But she didn't really want to be here, right? No, of course we're excited. Of course she does. I don't want to be here. They're plugging the lingerie ball. Bodog ball. lingerie ball is going to be we're great. We're on a 13 city tour. We're having a ball. 13 yeah. city tour. And this is the one place she doesn't want to be, Patrice? Come on. We totally. We were totally excited about being here. Yes. She's just a right. nice person that kind of keeps to herself, and she doesn't run ah, her ah, mouth ah, randomly. Ah, ah, this is what... <laughs> You're see, obsessed with these girls. You just sounded like a Dodge trying I to start. Just, I just don't want to be like, because it, it was unfounded. 
uh-huh. that she, she they have. By the, the way, speech. if Bodog's listening, Patrice is not a uh, regular member of the Open Academy <laughs> show. He is in studio because he's got a gig in Philly he's promoting. Uh, and, uh, Bodog knows we love them. <laughs> Bodog.net. Listen, Bodog, I apologize. Here's what I apologize for: the c word, as they say. Yeah. Chasing her out, but I just. I you just, know how many people wanted to uh, check out the lingerie bowl now to see which one you were talking about to see if she will perform in the lingerie bowl? She absolutely will. She right. Will of course. Perform the so, bowl. Of course. Yes. She's what committed. It, what she's committed. It, what does she what does she do? She's a cheerleader. She's a model and yeah. a cheerleader. Cheerleader. Mm-hmm. That's great. And a secret weapon. Really? Mm-hmm. What's, what's for what? Well, if a team's behind, they can bring her in to you know, secret weapon. Bring the team ahead. And how really? Do do that? Mm-hmm. How do they do that? I, when just what I said, when the team's behind, they'll bring her in. They'll bring her in. Yeah. And and what is she good at? Yeah. What is she we can't tell things. you. It's a secret. Yep. It's a secret. <laughs> she was really hot. Yeah, she. I mean, she's beautiful. She is. Oh, wait, um, are you going to admit that she's beautiful? She was fucking she's sexy. Gorgeous. What do you want? I mean, it's not that wasn't the point. <laughs> it was attitude. It, it, it was some, one of these things. Is you are a other. big bully. I, no, appa- I know just why. came off like a big bully Did, guy. I, I applaud apologize. Patrice, though. People need to come in here and, and, and want to have fun. She, she and, didn't, it wasn't in here long enough to even see. She but, said not one word. Not a word, and right. You. And another, we're back. Right. And, a, and another thing, though, for real, really. Yeah. <laughs> we're back. Bo- body language. <laughs> I just yeah, people, you were usually it. usually uh, I, I'm a professional at walking people out of comedy shows, and usually if the person that's being walked, if their friends don't walk with them, it's there's a there's a slight bit. You ever of see truth from dusk till dawn? You ever see Quentin Tarantino's character? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like when a woman was around him, how he fantasized and like thought he heard her say things and meant things. That's <laughs> no. you. You were two seconds away from. From the guy leaving the room, one guy, like, and you hacking her up into pieces on the bed. No, man. You are a psychopath. No, it's like uh, she's, she was lovely. The, 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 all right, well, we lost her. Lovely. We got three lovely blondes still in the studio. They're beautiful. Well, yeah, hopefully gotta, we'll have three by the time this and, ends. And the girl Unless outside. Patrice wants to insult somebody else. <laughs> I don't want to. The girl outside? You mean the girl that's out in the no, street? No, not that bitch. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 your yeah, sister. sister. That's your sister? No. I said the sister. The sister? What does she do? Her and sister. She's a part of our PR firm. Oh, I love them. Yeah. I love all of them. She was gorgeous. She'll be the one that gives a full report back to you know their people, and then we'll have. It's all to... about you. Yeah. So you girls are uh, cheerleaders. Yeah. You guys rock. Do you play? <laughs> Secret weapons. Do you yeah. get out there and and knock it around a little bit. Yeah. What do you pl- What do you play in? Do you play, do play in the same like a cheerleader uniform? No. It's no. We are brought out on the field. We're gonna play in this and then the little. In that, shorts. I see, because you got numbers yeah. on your uh, little mm-hmm. hot little tops. And I'm wearing yeah. the cheerleader outfit. This and you got the cheerleader outfit mm-hmm. on. We're representing both sides. Yes, you are. Very good. See, I I found nothing wrong with the other girl with these girls. Yeah, I thought we could lose. Would have been up nice, a bit. like you know, I uh, like brunettes. It would have been nice to have a brunette in here. Not that you know the blondes aren't beautiful, but. He chased the only brunette out of the whole uh, goddamn building. <laughs> I know. Chased her out of Manhattan. You big, g- <laughs> you King Kong motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you terrorizing Manhattan, huh? Call me a big black. Uh, call me anything you want. Go ahead. You can, go, ahead. go ahead, ladies. Get it out. King Kong motherfucker. Wait, I still don't know what this lingerie bowl's about. <laughs> Obviously, there's the hotness factor, but then what? Yeah. It's girls there's playing hot women football. playing football in, in lingerie. Most importantly, there's cheerleaders. In <laughs> lingerie. Oh, and Jenny McCarthy football. is hosting. Dennis, Dennis Rodman, Rodman is the commissioner. The commissioner. There's yeah. a lot yeah. of the celebrities involved. Yeah. You ever see? It's great. The uh, the snap when they uh, hike the ball. Yeah. The girl bends over That's and very nice. the girl between her legs. Like very that. sexual. Are yeah. there going to be any uh, oopsies? <laughs> Will there be any? Might be popular. There are oopsies, yes. There are oopsies. Yeah, some hair might See, that's hold. Any record setting for rushing or passing yardage <laughs> or uh, field goal uh, <laughs> length? Nothing like that going to be. I doubt we'll see any records uh, broken like that. Who, no. Who's the lady in charge? What's What's your name? Benita. You need to sell this better. The guys out there need to know that there's going to be oopsies. There's a pot, there's a Who cares about the football? But all of a sudden, like, this all of a sudden, there's this morning. Of oopsies. You ever see uh, in pro football where a guy, maybe the shirt gets pulled and the shoulder pad pops out? Yeah. Think that. Think that? Right. Will that happen? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen? Waldro- oh, yeah, wardrobe. Uh, Anything can happen. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Write a letter right now. Are you penning a little he note, dear? He, he's 
a he's got a good heart. Wait, you're Big making him bear. apologize? Dear Dan. Big Teddy Bear with a good Dear, heart. What's her yeah. name? He can admit when he has made a mistake Dear and Daniel, that's what he's currently I doing. I'm so out of picture next to him. Sorry. And I'm feeling a great deal of pride. Yeah. yeah. So sorry. Where did you get that I'm picture? Sorry. Of me? I've seen him be such a, a big Calling. teddy bear sweetheart, yeah, and I've seen him just be you. a despicable human being. <laughs> Some people the have those extremes. Yeah. And we've seen one extreme, and now we're seeing another. Word. He's the guy. I'm impressed and, right now. And uh, keep writing. Uh, uh, all, yeah. The the c word and <laughs> prejudging <laughs> you. Boy, you prejudge her. I don't. Was he's writing a book. Okay, it's okay. Wrong. Oh my God! You know what? Patrice O'Neill. I like that picture. There you go. There you go. All right. I don't even know what to say other than, wow. There you go. I'm wild by you right now. Mm. Wow! I just wrote. I just wrote. Dear Danielle. Danielle, I am sorry, so sorry for calling you the c word, and boy, I was wrong. And then Danielle, she let herself go. She let herself go. There you go. That's all you can do is try to make your wrongs. Uh, I'm right. sorry. Okay. Well, Patrice okay. called her you the c have, word. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for having us on your upset. show. You guys, any more questions? Uh. How well, many, how chicks. many, how many hotties on either, uh, either side? Yeah. Standard football rules? Yes, sir. All right. It's seven on seven. Seven so on seven. Seven on seven. What about the nails? The girl's gonna break the nails. Ooh. Um. How are they gonna I, protect I their fine nails? I'm looking. You can't go by I'm me. I'm a cheerleader. I'm not playing I'm like, I, don't, I have the real things. So when, when you're playing, yeah, when you're playing in contact sport. football, it's not about the nails. You're out there. No. It's about the sport. No, doing it's your about thing. the oops. And this is gonna be tackling and tackling full. Full on yeah. contact. What do you wear on your legs? Is it going to be um? Like knee pads. And like, do you, what do you got on there, under there? Yeah, I see matching shorts. some. Jesus little, Christ. These are like little boy shorts. They are little boy shorts indeed. <laughs> uh huh. Indeed they are. Can we see an oopsie? That's <laughs> ah, wonderful. <laughs> knee pads. Very yeah, sexy. Like little... All right. All right, girls. Yeah. That's uh, they, wonderful. They gotta go. Yeah. All right. Well, Good tune in. Thank Super you Bowl uh, Sunday uh, Andre, during the halftime you. show. I want to thank I want to thank the big huge yeah, motherfucker for not coming in here and beating us up for yes, what Patrice that's said. Corey. That's Corey. He's the assistant tour wow. manager and he's great. This big guy. This big guy right here. Yeah, yeah. Corey. All right. All right, All right ladies. Corey, guys, I'm sorry. Right, so thank you for coming you in. This, by the way, we appreciate thank having you. you. Thank, thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Sorry, we got off on the wrong foot there. Yeah, the wrong foot. The wrong foot, yeah, but you know, but the foot was in bounds. So give him a tongue lashing. Uh, uh, well, we Bodog.net, we everybody. Be, uh, we'll visit we'll Bodog.net as soon as you leave the studio. Uh, thank you, ladies, and uh, there they go. <laughs> there the girls in the lingerie ball. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get this out of the way right now. Whole I bow to Patricia. Are you today. doing that? <laughs> I absolutely bow to you, my friend. You're doing the um, the slow clap. I bow to you. You saw something and you went for it. I have I haven't seen that vicious an attack that quickly. He was like, you ever you ever hear about the attacks where someone's standing there and a pit bull who's all happy and wagging its tail just lunges at someone's throat that's in the room. That's what that reminded you me of. You can't see it, dude. It's like I'm not like you go to Creskin, but it's like. I it I just it's just thing you can feel that run through yeah and it's just like you you can't feel that comfortable being that just because you she did look good but you can't feel comfortable coming here changing the mood of because you know what wow. she was listening to us for an hour uh -huh. be completely juvenile and she just could she just was like so you're saying yucky you are either the nastiest or the most insightful person I've I ever just, seen just no. You didn't see that? I am no. so with Patrice on I this. I didn't even see it. As soon as she walked in with a winter coat, that that was such a sign it wasn't even funny. Like Patrice said, the other girl had kind of a coat on, but it was still sexy and had something to do with the lingerie action. I didn't know. That notice. girl had a winter coat like she was ready to go down the, the, the slope. You know, you could be right, but I didn't even and notice she almost she pretty much had her like arms folded. She did not want to be in that situation. And the and the reason why we don't have a lot of women on the show lately is because of women just like her, where they they're like, ugh, they just want to go through the motions. Absolutely. Wow. The he... rest of the girls were lovely. I liked them. They played the role. I didn't they were see having fun. Anything. 
Bye. What? I didn't say anything to. It's like you can. Feel you're just surprised, it. Anthony, because he jumped on her so quickly. No, because I usually didn't notice. Usually we will like kind of like you know. We would have had to have talked to her a little right, bit, right. and and then we would have been. Dude, we've been in that situation, and you talk to him a little while, and then you go, all right, this chick just ain't into it. But you were like. No, no, I saw some friggin' brain waves. No, I saw it too. I saw it too. And what I was thinking to myself, like, here we go again, and I'm going to have to do a little uh, evil Opie. I swear to God. But I thought it was going to be 10 or 15 minutes in where I finally would call her out or something. Evil Opie is Jesus compared to the, <laughs> oh, the, the monster we saw. I understand. That's what made it great. And look at man. I swear to you. It's just you, you, you. It's like the comfort zone. Yeah. To bring it down. It's just it, you know that she needed that. It was a little medicine. It didn't taste right. No. You know she'll feel better later because she won't do that again. Are are are, are they gone? Mm, sort of. Are they out of um, earshot? Sort of. I think Patrice E-rock. needs to run out there and give oh, the one are. girl a little calmo. Calmo. Getting, calm all, getting all thumbs up. Calmo. Yeah, I tell her. I tell what? Her, I tell her. Oh, okay. The audio's off. Look, let me say this then. Patrice, that was fan fucking <laughs> Look, I, someone, someone has to play good cop uh, in order in order to keep anyone in the room. Um, but oh my God, when you unloaded on her, I was laughing my ass off inside. God bless you, Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> oh my God, she just. The girl's name, by the way, was Danielle Gamba. She's got a website, DanielleGamba.com. G A M B A. Danielle Gamba dot com. Twenty years old from Minnesota. Twenty. She's just a Wait, baby. She's from Minnesota. Are you sure she's from Minnesota? That Let me see theory the stinks. Let me see the picture. They said uh, the because she's from California, California, she's cold. <laughs> she moved out to California to go to school to become a makeup artist and also to pursue modeling and dancing. Exotic. She didn't want to do it. Katie also enjoys going to see her favorite bands play <laughs> and loves to stay at home and watch movies. <laughs> it's a hell of a thing to throw on your resume. She just didn't want to do it. I know a couple of movies she shouldn't watch. But she left too fast. <coughs> she All left. Right. She just left. Well, we yeah. love Bodog.net. Thanks for getting yeah, us sorry, involved in Bodog. Oh, oh, well, Bowl. no, that was there was no there was no reflection on Bodog or the lingerie right. bowl. That was just a personal little observation All that right. Patrice made. And We're going to regroup. We've been talking for an hour and a half straight. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know that Howard is hinting that uh, he's not going to do Fridays because because uh, uh, because there's not enough commercials on his show that he doesn't have enough material to do five days a week. So he's already hinting that came from him. Yeah, he's already hinting that's the reason why he's going to do uh, only four days a week. No, because Letterman does four days and. He wants to be part of like his, Letterman. It was part of his deal to be part begin of his deal. With. It's but less work, more money. But he's going to spin it and say that you know, no, no, it's because you know now that uh, we're not playing 25 minutes of commercials an hour, I'm giving you more radio. So I, I need to, to take a you know a day off every week to kind of recharge the batteries. Get the get out of here. And he only works nine months a year, four days a week, nine months a year. You made the right choice uh, by getting your XM. Trust me on that. Oh. All right, we're going to take a break. When we get back, something's going to happen. Yeah, there's other stuff to go to. There's plenty of it. We have material. We do? It's, there's uh, 20,000 CDs in front of you. Uh, all right, we have stuff to go to. <laughs> no, we actually do. I'm just fucking with you. We got remixes. We got a great story about a lady that gave birth. She didn't even know she was pregnant. It's an amazing story, actually. See, now I have to prove we do have stuff. And American Idol stuff. There was a couple of things worth talking about. Yeah, they do that uh, two nights in a row, the American Idol. And that country bit pulled it out of our asses. I liked it. Just kind of pulled it out of our Some asses. Some people a little annoyed with the country music because they don't like it or something. But it's uh, sorry. It's not a part of you. There's a lot of the Midwest that does enjoy it. Um, and the people that even don't enjoy it might have enjoyed our little spin on it. <laughs> we had to be uh, brave enough to give it a shot, and I think we did okay with that one. Sometimes it's just about learning and crossing cultural lines and calling an attractive girl a cunt and just things like that. <laughs> yeah, but that is harsh, bro. Because I, I say it so free. You know what it's she like? She was an 11, it's by like the you, way. It's like you come here and you're just free. Your mouth is free. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and good. And if you go on the regular radio, you just go, oh, shit, how do I... 
Like, how do I do this again? Yes. You know, Don't ever lose that. I'll uh, kill you. Patrice, do I'll you realize you. this also? Uh, do you realize probably when you first came on this very show, and I'm not talking about NEW. I'm talking about our XM show, that she was probably in, in high school. <laughs> Like, that was a baby girl. It's just... That look, was a little baby girl. I don't hate... It's like, you. I hate... The, she in, can't the even... entitlement that she felt... She can't even... be how she was. She can't even go across the street and get a drink to feel better. Be, she's but, not but old she enough. she thinks that that makes her somebody because... But you know what? Bravo. I say the same thing that every guy says to her in the street. They say to 40... Other women in the in the in the next block, and she has to learn how to be a little bit bigger than how cute she is. A Do little thicker skinned, just better. You know what you that did? She left because she felt entitled. She didn't want to be here. You felt it. You put the first wrinkle on her face. <laughs> She's been a kid, loved, like just looked at and appreciated. Never had a bad thing said. She like scowled, and you put that first wrinkle in her <laughs> the face. First wrinkle. <laughs> On that 20-year-old face. Oh, Jesus Christ. You, know? <laughs> you don't apologize. It just, it just was... Uh, I don't know. That was She's starting to realize that her hotness isn't going to get her through life. It's life. It's life. Yeah, that you gave her a life lesson. That's right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you an asshole. I know. Because you know in her head, she's like, I'll do the lingerie bowl because it's just a matter of time before Hollywood discovers me. Yeah. And, and I'm on the next, you know... Uh, Charlize Theron or whatever. Hey, there you go. Or Reese uh, Sometimes Witherspoon. Sometimes they got to take some hits. Hey, the reality Bobby. is she's not. She's going to hobnob because she's a makeup artist. She's going to talk. She's going to give a card out. Mm -hmm. She's going to do this and that. Yeah. But that's what she did. And those girls, the other girls, fucking know I was right. They were so happy I did that because not one face changed. They, were, they got happy. The one, the one blonde, the last one that walked out, and she looked at you and made that kind of like kind of thing so it, I, you were probably spot on yeah with your assessment then, i mean i mean not only of the fact that she didn't want to be here but the fact that the other girls all know it yeah. and that so you probably dye her hair blonde on. everybody else comes here goofy blonde oh, gotta be blonde. Do it. that's not the same one is it what oh now she's saying she's 22 years old 22 and the black girl has oh, that yeah, has her. that that speech that she's always got ready oh, yeah. to make to make oh, up for Miss girl. Fucking Coat. Hey, uh, company girl. Danielle's interest, general, comedy clubs. <laughs> Not anymore. And collecting Marilyn Monroe memorabilia. Booby, booby, booby. Is that her MySpace? Casino. Are there pictures? Her favorite movies, Casino, Blow, and The Ref. No. It's uh, not. Single. Uh, dating. She's straight. She's 5'4". Uh, no, yes, someday in college model. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you think Patrice will make her top eight? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, God. No, uh, she just didn't have it. She just, that was a teeny bit of medicine. She'll be okay. If I ever meet her again, she'll say, I was the girl that you blah, 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 blah. She'll be very mad. She'll want revenge. And I'll go, look, sometimes I do what I do, but don't you feel better? It, 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 no one likes medicine. I got to take medicine, and it's and it tastes bad. She just had to take some, and she she'll shake. She'll have to shake. She'll, she'll have she'll have some uh, what do they call them? Some some uh, like diarrhea, some symptoms, <laughs> symptoms, <laughs> she'll have side some effects, side effects to that. Side effects may cause shaking, <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's her little bio. Well, first of all, in case you don't know. Me, my name is Danielle Gamba, and I'm a Bay Area native. I'm Danielle Gamba. Of Italian <laughs> ancestry. <laughs> Patrice made fun of me. <laughs> Get down, I'm going to kill Patrice. Is Patrice O'Neill, please, dear? Is Patrice O'Neill, dear? I'd like to talk to him, please. <laughs> Patrice, remember when I said I was going to kill you last? I lied. I lied. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm family oriented and love yeah. spending time with my friends and family, Aww. whether it be curling up on the couch or traveling the open seas. Arr. It's with them I share my love for travel, dance, and culinary arts. Hey, my favorite cooks. destination so far is the beaches of the Bay Islands, where the sky, sand, and water are postcard perfect. 
As for dance goes, my most prized performances were in the Oakland Ballet's Nutcracker and as an NFL cheerleader. Ah. When I'm not on stage or traveling the globe, there's no place like home for me. That's when my sister and I prepare fun and fancy dishes. <laughs> Although we have been known to do more taste testing than cooking at times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You motherfuckers are so stupid, man. It's Especially when it comes to cooking, oh. though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an ass. I really am the modder for doing dumb shit. I could have just sat, sat there. Y'all would eventually trash this. Oh, yeah. And I had to come on and just, ah, yes. It'll get you, you fucking. And it is like, You're a martyr. And y'all are doing so much. You're deconstructing this bitch. It's, it's like, oh, come on, man. I love it. I love it. Well, she sounds lovely from her bio. Absolutely. Oh, y'all make me laugh. All right. She was the greatest piece of ass I've ever had, and I've had them all over the world. Patrice O'Neill doesn't get that picture. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just get us out of here, Dad. Right. Thank you. Gotta love the History Channel, probably one of the best channels on TV. On Monday at 9 p.m., 8 Central, the new season of Digging for the Truth, starring Josh Bernstein, begins. This time, Josh is headed over to Stonehenge to dig up the truth. A lot of secrets around Stonehenge, supposedly the site of human sacrifices, ancient rituals, and God knows what else. But if you watch the show, you'll see Josh Bernstein dig up the facts, separate the fiction, and in the end, you'll have the answers. That's what makes this show and the channel so great. In upcoming episodes, Josh will unravel Nefertiti in The Return of the Mummy. Marvel as Josh leaps from America's pyramids to follow in the footsteps of the giant Patagonia. Who knew there were giants in Patagonia? Not even a brush with death could stop this intrepid explorer in his quest for the truth. Catch up with Josh in Digging for the Truth this Monday at 9 only on the History Channel. They've got the dirt on history. Big Hog from Whack Bag, what's up? Boys, what's going on? Hey, man. I must say, man, that 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 one bit that you just did with those girls it was, is what makes you so much different from Howard, man. Because if those girls would have walked into Howard's studio, all he would have said to them was, "Wow, you're so hot." Well, you you don't even know what I would do to you, and wouldn't even call her out, man. You know, he and you guys are just fucking awesome. That made me fucking cry. Oh, cool, yeah. Hey, Patrice. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had a Sorry. great opportunity. <laughs> he thought he was going to compliment you. Okay. He did have a good opportunity there because the you're honest, you were no. involved there. No. You were feeling took. Don't, don't give me this fake shit. Fuck Everybody it. likes to hear a little compliment. Uh, hey, uh, Patrice, man, I got to give you props. That was fantastic. You uh, want to hear a little something, great. something? Come on, but no, it's come like, on. It's hard, to it's hard to defend your your integrity, but I'm telling you why I waited so long is I knew you were going to do it. All right, Jesus, you bastards. Uh, I wasn't going to answer him, but just. In case he was going to call me. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. I gave him a... I, go, I gave him a... Yeah. 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 Well, here's the, uh, here's the story of the day, everybody. Mm -hmm. Listen closely. Finally, can't make this up. Don Parnell was told as a teenager she could not have a baby. That's what she thought for 16 years of her life until last Friday. Don says she never knew she was pregnant. Doctors didn't know either. Yeah, she says she was a bit depressed. Yeah, she put on a little bit of weight. But nothing tipped her off until she gave birth to a baby girl in her own bathroom. The baby's healthy. So is mom. Oh, the things you do not know. Can't make this up. It was in the toilet. Yeah. Why didn't they say in the toilet? In the to Not just in the bathroom. In the toilet. She, she a was... Plunk. She, uh, yeah, was depressed, so she thought she'd just put on some weight. She decides uh, uh, to go to the bathroom. She's feeling pains. Oh. She thought it was due to her chiropractor screwing something up. Uh, so she goes to the bathroom to take a dump, and a baby falls out into the toilet. <laughs> she ran to the bathroom in, in excruciating pain, right. Yeah, you ever have the pains where, you know, you got to go to the bathroom so bad that, like, the back of your thigh muscles feel like they're giving out? Yeah. Like that kind of pain. But it was labor. What, did, and she sits did she on the toilet. Right it came out in the toilet bowl. And she knew, she goes, oh, shit, it's a baby. And how many pounds? 
Like a regular baby. Been a, and where's the umbilical cord? She stood up. And, all that, and, yeah, it must have been at that point. Yeah, then you go, oh, boy, either I'm really sick <laughs> or I just had a baby. <laughs> She's like, I shit my colon out? Like, oh, my God. Like my this colon is, is, I just <laughs> fell out. I got to give up Taco Bell. <laughs> I, I, my New Year's resolution. Oh, my God. I've heard a lot of crap stories, but I never heard one like this. This is bad. Uh, this doesn't even sound right. I, I, I refuse to believe that that can happen, dude. Yeah, I, I, anytime you hear about these girls that are pregnant and don't know it. And yeah. How old was she? A little odd. Uh, I don't know. Because yeah. I'm saying, I'm asking because that just sounds like something somebody would do to cover up something. To go, oh my yeah. God, I didn't know, mommy. I didn't know. If she had been told boyfriend. for the past 16 years that she couldn't have a baby. I'm assuming she's in her 30s. Per, per, perhaps. Wait. Give me a break with that. You don't know you have a fucking... I know if I have yeah. a... You know, I know if Whatever. I'm clogged up for a week. Like, oh, well, shit. Well, at least uh, they took her to the hospital, and, and they're doing fine. That's yep. what they said. They're doing fine. It's not like she, you know, had it at a prom and threw it in the garbage. Right. Like some teens do. Damn, and then you got a story to tell your kid when he gets a little older. You think you can handle it? Yeah. How Please do you tell down, that? You know, I... Where was I? Well, I was in a warm bath. <laughs> Uh, all our loved ones were around us. There was a doctor there, and when the time was right, um, he pulled you from my body. We were one for nine months, and then he put and placed me on, placed you on my breast, and you you suckled for the first time. Yeah, um, I really thought you were a shit. <laughs> I, I felt that you were a shit. I, I, I went to get rid of you through the normal means of getting rid of shit sitting on a toilet. And you fell in the water. Uh, Kaplunk. And I pissed first, so you fell in my piss water. <laughs> and, you, and I wiped and I wiped. I just thought it was one of those those ones I just had to keep going. Who knew you? <laughs> You're lucky there wasn't an interesting article in the magazine rack. Hey, or Ma. you to drown. <laughs> hey, hey, Ma, what is it, shitty? Um, can, I, can I get an Xbox 360? Shitty, no. Shit. Sit down. Let me talk. Let me say something to you. I'm tired with this shitty attitude. So is that, is that good or bad? <laughs> a, little, a little shitty. I'm just being myself. Her quick thinking, though, uh, cut the umbilical cord. She stood up and just slammed the top of the toilet seat down. Uh, cutting the cord. All right, we got American Idol audio. We're not going to spend too much time today, obviously. No, it was only an hour last night. And it thank wasn't God. as good as uh, the night before. Uh, pretty good. I, li I like. One thing I noticed we don't have many clips of, but I enjoy in the show is the bad singers, the the really bad ones. Right. That come in there. Well, we got the I shot the sheriff from the day before. Remember, we were talking about that, but we didn't have the audio. Yeah, this guy <laughs> was just a, kept a top. Saying, I shot He the just kept sheriff. saying I shot the sheriff. Oh God. Yeah, let's let us. him go on and on. In case you missed it from American Idol. This guy was a sheriff, too, right? Yeah, he was some uh, cop from Ohio. Who to treat kindly? And that that's ain't the, him. Well, that's the cursing girl. Well, we can start with her. White chick curses while singing and freaks out. Remember? She got so nervous. Yeah. She was fucking up her song and then starts cursing. Who to treat kindly and who to enslave? <laughs> and uh -huh. like a good man, you still fall to the floor when a great big <laughs> and a big brown Wow. That was a mess. Wow. wow. A right mess. <laughs> it really was. Thank you. I didn't make it. You know what? They're stupid because I know I can sing and they can <laughs> They said that I wasn't strong enough. And excuse me, I have a stronger voice than most of these people that I've heard singing. So they said that they're You know what? When I'm famous, you'll be sorry that you didn't keep me on your precious little competition, okay? So, you can I went in there and I belted that out so they can my Your precious little show. I love the every biggest show year. in America. Every year there's the people that go, well, you know something? They're going to be sorry. They're going to be sorry because I'm going to be famous without their stupid show. Their stupid show. And five seasons, uh, this is their fifth season, I haven't seen one season where anyone has gone... You know, it would have been so much better if we would have added that girl that really sucked. <laughs> you know, they never, ever, ever remember those and that's people. A girl and they're never famous. That's a girl that's been told her whole life that she's great. Yeah. No one has ever been able to tell her any, you know, anything That was her Patrice moment. Right. Right there. 
Simon gave her a little bit of medicine. He does that to a lot of people, though, man. Gives a lot of medicine. That a show lot of first such, wrinkles. Such a fucking... So it's just... You know what? I, I've never into the, I've never been in a situation where someone... Like, okay, you give your opinion, but I've never gone in going, please validate my existence. Mm-hmm. And then and, and on on my ability, and then, you know, somebody goes, you just fucking suck. And I and I go leaving crying or holding my chest, the sissy chest hole, you know. <laughs> I love that you brought up the sissy chest hole when you go like you gasp and you got to take your five <laughs> fingertips, spread your fingers apart as far as you can, five tips, just the tips, not your palm, on your chest and go... <gasps> In the middle of the chest, too. Not that's, right on your heart. Just yeah, yeah, in the middle of your chest. That's the faggot chest hold when you're shocked. When you sh- <laughs> show it at home now. It's fun. <laughs> Go. And spread your... They're going to be spread very far apart. That motherfucker make me give me the faggot... The, the, the shock faggot chest hold. Get out of here, nigga. Fucking... Patrice, you should quit comedy. You're not funny. You suck. <gasps> there it is. <laughs> but I thought I did. I thought I was good. That's the best ones. The ones that really think they're great. Yeah. That think they're Good. They're going to go in there. I am going, and every guy on that show is gay. I am going to be the next American Idol. I'm going in there. I am going to knock their socks off. And they come in with all confident, strutting. Hi, my name is Rob. I'm from Chicago. And and two words out of their mouth. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <gasps> what? <gasps> Bye. And they leave crying. It's so destructive to your career, dude. Oh. They got to have one. See, it's like the lottery. They got to have one. That makes people think that this is, you're not a one-hit wonder. Mm-hmm. And so they they push they pumped up Kelly Clarkson, you yeah. know, to make sure people know. But the rest of them, this Carrie Underwood, <laughs> gone. Mm. Uh, you've never heard from Constantine out of peep. Carrie Where Underwood has go. the number one song in America. They, they, they all Country. do when they fucking after. Jesus, yeah. take the wheel. With Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, Ruben. Where did Ruben go? Uh, 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 Fantasia. She's she's a. You know wrestler. who's doing well? Clay Aiken. He's not anymore. Now it's coming out. It's you know it's the it's the internet sissy thing that he's doing. He's doing Vegas. So what? He's still. You know who does Vegas? People who've been in the business twenty seven years. That's a <laughs> end of your career thing. Is fucking Vegas? Maybe in the old days. Yeah, the new days. It's what new changing. Vegas? Really? New Vegas. It's changing. Who's in Vegas? The new Vegas. All right. Play is going to be playing the MGM. Are they? Yep. Saw that on the marquee. Did you? Yep. Chris right. Angel. Oh. What's that? The fucking magician? <laughs> the, the, the mind freak kid. <laughs> well, well, magicians are different in Vegas. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, I Vegas is made for the magicians. Singers and comedians. Rolling Stones? Maybe. Stones ain't playing Vegas. All right, here we go. I shot the sheriff. Dice! <laughs> hey, you don't put down Vegas! <laughs> Here's the I shot the sheriff guy from American Idol. Brandon, what do you do? I am a deputy sheriff. Okay, in Chicago. In uh, West Virginia. All right. What are you going to sing? I'm going to sing the chorus to I shot the sheriff. Of course. <laughs> the chorus. I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. And I shot the sheriff, <laughs> but I didn't shoot the deputy. <laughs> and I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. And I shot the sheriff. But I didn't shoot the deputy. And I <laughs> shot the sheriff. But I didn't shoot the deputy. Here we go. And I <laughs> shot the sheriff. Yeah. But I didn't shoot the deputy. <laughs> you know, like, Just trying to change it up. This motherfucker. Wait, wait. And I <laughs> shot the sheriff. Is that it? Yeah, that's, yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Wow. He tried to break it up with the trills to make it sound a little different. He's like, shout the Jerry. And he didn't even say no, no, no. He no. I shot the Jerry. Oh, no, no. Yeah, something. <laughs> but I didn't shoot the deputy. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> and I shot that sheriff. I, 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 I shot the sheriff. Oh, I shot him. <laughs> Nothing. 
Did you see the little teeny cowboy who never left the house? <laughs> yeah. That guy was great last and night. And he, he was, sang to his he turkeys. was an autistic singer. I pray that he wins. He was like... He was so nervous. He comes from a town of four, I think. They asked if he ever sang in front of people, and he goes, this is my first time out in public. Out in public. This kid is with his family... Just I guess uh, uh, three more people. Four generations of, of just horrendousness. Turkey farming and cattle. God knows what else it goes on. cattle thing, too. And that's all they do. And this is his first time in public. And he belted out Elton John. What was the song he fucking sung? Um, he wasn't good enough to make it, by the man, way. Man, yes, but, he but, was. That dude was okay because he was, he was so, so nervous. horrible as a human being. But then his voice was like, oh, shit. He was so nervous. Yeah, that he'll he'll his head will explode in Hollywood. Do we have that clip? Maybe we could get that clip real fast. He was I thought he was great, man. And he was like, well, "What song are you gonna sing?" Elton John. He couldn't remember the song, and they finally said, "All right, well, just sing it. We don't need to know what the name of it is." Yeah. And he starts singing it, and he was shaking. Yeah. Now we got to get the audio. Uh, as we get that audio, the highlight though of last night's show was that thing. That that. Uh, did you notice when he walked out, they started playing the crying game music? I was laughing so hard. Oh, that was really funny. The crying game music was playing in the background. This supposedly was a guy. In all fairness, this thing it's a woman, man. was completely in the middle. Yeah. You look at the thing and go, wow, that's, uh, that's a gay guy. Had, and then you look a little more and go, wow, that's a girl that has like manly features. It, it was, was a girl's right head. In the middle. It was a girl's head on a, an emaciated boy body uh, wearing built, high heels. Built like a girl. Built like it a was girl. A, it was an emaciated boy's body that he had twisted himself into a girl's And dressed body. like in girl clothes. Girl, yeah. but then guy clothes, too. But also I mean, guy right clothes. right in the middle. And his voice was girly. The hair, the skin, the, the facial features, all girly. Well, here's a clip of uh, meeting the thing. The thing. Becky, how old are you? I'm 18. You're 18. Where are you from? From Denver. I'm supporting our state. Tell me something interesting about yourself. <laughs> Do, is uh, that necessary, is it? <laughs> no. Oh, come on. Something interesting about me? Well, I'm a very talented person, and people confuse me for a girl a lot of times, which I think is so funny, because I just laugh my butt off all are the time. Are you a girl? No, I'm a guy. You are? I go into the men's restroom all the time, and the guys look at me like, are we in the wrong bathroom? I'm like, no, I'm a guy. No. I stand up just like you do. <laughs> wow. It's kind of like Taradice again, a little Taradice in there. I, I stand there just like you do. <laughs> yeah. I walk into the, the boys' bathroom a lot of times, and then sometimes the guys say, like, what are you doing in here? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a guy. <laughs> America ain't ready for that shit. No. I don't give a fuck if she sound, sounded like Frank Whitney. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> Sir, Frank, Frank Whitney. Whitney Celine. <laughs> right. Fucking Streisand. <laughs> you ain't I'm getting on this. Sorry, you're not through. <laughs> <laughs> and I am well, telling I... you, New York, New York, <laughs> so I will never die. It, it, tears, everybody, the whole country's crying. You ain't on this, faggotor, <laughs> thingy thing, whatever the fuck you are. Well, we got... Motherfuckers didn't vote for Clay because they thought he was a little fruity. Uh, yeah. Well, um, the next clip is titled, It Sings. <laughs> Fucking fan. <laughs> So what are you going to sing? Uh, Whitney Houston, Queen of the Night. Uh, and I, wow, okay. Interesting. I got the stuff that you want. I got the thing that you need. I got more than enough to make it drop to your knees. Because I'm the queen of the night. Queen of the night. Oh, yeah, all right. You got a problem with the way that I am. They say I'm trouble, but I don't give a damn. Because when I'm bad, I know I'm better thank you uh -huh. thank you it's not a bad voice I, right this is what i'm saying mm. the voice was as good or as bad as any motherfucker he let through 
He let the the little cowboy guy through, who's cool. So he said questionable. Yeah. He let um cookie the, guy. There was the rock guy who they they kind yeah uh, no emotion they you said know, and this and that. But yeah. this I got, and you should have seen him swinging his little sissy hips. <laughs> I got this dirty boy and like it's, it, it was swinging clockwise counterclockwise. I got this dirty hips <laughs> and I was well and he was just swinging. I'm like yeah. all right go boy yeah. And, and, go boy girl. Go boy girl. So it's like you. That, he was just but <laughs> America ain't ready oh, for that motherfucker. No. Hi, what's your name? Mary J. Uh, <laughs> Bill. B Mary J. Bill L Vandros. Fucking Houston Brown, motherfucker. I got the stuff. You're not right for this competition. No. All right, here we go. We got the judges reacting to the performance. Interesting lyrics in that song. Um, Simon, what do you think? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Atrocious? The singing. Confused? I think I did awesome. That's awesome. I love your self confidence. Reality is, voice isn't up to par for a competition like this. Oh dear. Well, it's bitch. definitely different. It's no Kelly Clarkson or Ruben Stutter or anything. No, I agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. Yes or no, Paula? I, the voice, it said it's not up to par for this kind of competition. It, and I'm speaking just the voice alone. Oh, boy. They had to keep. So now, they, the only one that didn't, that did not stay on the whole disclaimer that it's just going off the voice is Goofy Ass, what's his name? Uh, uh, the English motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, Simon, Simon. Who's like, look, mm. you're confused. Yeah. You you know, evidently you're a faggot. We don't like motherfuckers <laughs> like you on here. And, and he, he the other ones kept going, just because, you know, the singing now. Not, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. voice isn't up to par. That nigga moved better than Paul Abdul. That <laughs> junkie. Well, here, uh, it cries. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's totally prejudiced to not accept someone because someone the boy was singing girl songs and they don't fit the song in the vocal range of the girl. I think that's totally prejudiced and I think Simon's an <laughs> and I'm surprised You're that Paul I'm surprised that Paula said I suck and Randy was just trying to make it all better but yeah and America, if they don't accept me for who they are, then, oh well, I guess they can't handle it. She shows their own ignorance and stuff, and, oh well. That is what a torturous life that must be. Dude. Oh man, that's and I feel sorry for that that dude because it's like he's not gay. He's a he's a girl. He's a girl who has a pen. It's just so sad. Girl with a penis and no tits. Just that's what you are. Fucking sad and doesn't want to be a girl. Just a yeah. sissy, a third level sissy. <laughs> third level. <laughs> just on the highest, highest right. level on a sissy meter. It's just like, it's just like, and just to be tortured like that and just want to express himself with woman song. Yeah. I got to say. Yeah, what? singing the woman song. And, and it's like, and like, you know, guys, it's like how real guys change the lyrics. To like men, you know, it's raining stuff. Yeah, <laughs> hallelujah, it's raining things. It is all wet out here. Tom, uh, it's wet out here. Rough and tough is wet outside. It's raining things. Oh. <laughs> You gotta change the words to this. Uh, wow. Uh, it's raining stuff. Let yourself get absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's raining oh you woo Ow! Ow! Ouch and ooh! Watch out, motherfuckers! He was a bad motherfucker. Woo! Oh. And he had to do what he had to do. Nothing at all, man. Rearrange the sky so that each and every brother can get out there and do. Woo! <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> nobody. God damn. Come on, my yeah. We uh, changed the I lyrics, but we, you know. I right, think we, we got a hit on our hands. <laughs> it's raining stuff. <laughs> raining stuff and uh, touching the vulva thing. Oh, yeah, with clean hands. With clean hands. By the way, uh, who got rooked into watching fucking skating with celebrities? Five minutes of it. Oh, yeah, mother of I was, God. I was there. I got rooked in by those promos thinking that there was some shit that was going to oh, be, God five minutes be of going it. on. I watched the whole thing because I was did? yeah I was convinced that something was going to happen yeah nothing besides Bruce Jenner looking like Frankenstein on the ice <laughs> <laughs> Lily I'm skating Lily <laughs> Grandpa do you have a skating spell I could use <laughs> Eddie Eddie hold your father's hand Eddie he looks like skating fucking Frankenstein oh, monster it was just horrendous in the crowd clapping it was, it was just oh, awful, awful. Absolutely nothing to see there. Oh, kind of. I was bummed because they're making it sound like it was the it was the show to see. Oh, we got the little um the little cowboy. We got the audio of the little. Oh, you kid. got the little cowboy. Eighteen never left his house. This is his first uh, public appearance on American Idol. House next door to me. What? No? no. Elton John. <laughs> Here we go. This fucking kid. What's your name? Garrett Johnson. Uh, what are you gonna sing? Uh, Elton John. Uh, 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, Take a breath. Take a breath. Take a breath. There you turkey. go. I won't be singing in front of a turkey. Don't worry. Okay. He just well, said I only sing in front uh, of my turkeys. Um, oh, I'm so uh, You can just sing it. Okay. You don't have to don't tell us. Don't you have to tell us. You can just sing it. Uh, and can you feel the love tonight? Is it where we are? It's enough for this red-eyed wanderer that we got this far. Okay. Voice is good. <laughs> well, you could tell he's so nervous that you can't really get a good line on the voice. He cracked a little bit. Dude. You, you, you don't know if that's range problem or just... Pure nerves. God bless him, man. That dude, if he gets four inches of com, if he gets off of that oh, compound yeah. that he lives on, yeah, yeah, he he's if just an inch of confidence. Mm -hmm. That motherfucker is he's autistic. That's some autistic shit that we just, and that's the only way his family's nervous, his family's a yeah. cowboy, and they probably call him an asshole for singing, and they, they you hear stupid, whatever, singing, and, and the mother's like, leave him alone, he's a good singer, take him on down to that American Idol. This, if he just confidence, man, that dude, this kid yeah. can sing to me. Well, this is what the judges had to say. All right, so what do you think, Simon? Well, you know, we, th there is a good voice in there somewhere. Randy, what do you think? You would really benefit from some really good lessons. Yes, you would. I'm telling you. Because you have a nice I tone. need to sing for people. You have enough money to pay for vocal lessons? Oh, uh, probably not. Would someone help you? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't have much. <laughs> Because without that, I think you'd have a problem. Do you sing in the choir, church at all, or anything? This is the first time I've ever been out in public, really. Wow. <laughs> good for you. Well, you did a good job, dude. You did a good, good job. Good for you. Paula, yes or no? Not ready for the competition, but I'm really proud of you for this audition, so I'm going to have to say no. Okay, thank you. Good I job. am going to say yes. <laughs> uh, have you ever been on a plane before? No. I've always wanted to be on a plane. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a silly dream, but I always wanted to be on a plane. <laughs> Just a goofy kid. Yeah. Okay, moment of truth. You ready? 
Dude, because I like you, yes! Thank you. Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. Stop. Seriously, get some lessons. Okay, thank you. I will. I In will a get... town of four people. Paula was the bad guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, amazing. Bad because she there. thought, she thought, Everyone else is just going to... She gonna... absolutely just said yes, no, because she thought Simon was going to definitely say yeah. no. Yeah, But that he, that kid can sing. You just couldn't really get a feel for that because he was so nervous. And then can you imagine the voice? Because he's like... You feel... He sounds like uh, he's from the 50s or something. He's a prodigy. When he's you, you watch kind of those movie movies where they go back in time, that's how they always... Uh, yeah, have him talk. We'll see uh, next time. Well, next time he's got to perform. If he's uh, been he's... able to calm down, if they nah, train him a little bit, he's so out. Tim and Erie out next round. Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? Good morning. It made for a good story, and and they'll ride out the story, and then it'll be over. Tim, what's up? Hey guys, good morning to you. Hey, Tim. hey. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I, I'm calling to plead with you. You've got to get Drew Boogie to do a remix with the tree singing it's raining stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was the funniest uh, yeah. thing I've heard all week. You know what the most awful part of this whole thing is? I'm going to be driving home today singing It's Rain and Stuff the whole way home. Motherfucker, it just stuck in my head I'm gonna now. I'm going to spin the XM dial to actually find the song so I can do my own <laughs> version of Raining Things. Anything where there's some, a, a woman, something where man and this, and you have to, you, you yeah. have to change the word. You got to. Bang. <laughs> That's why put that, that sissy man is just like, he. how free is that just to be, you know? I'm the queen of the night. Oh, take it in the ass. Give yeah. it to me, baby. It's just like, oh, shit. What, what came out first, my girl or my guy? Which one was oh, it first? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Earl would know. Or I see Earl in there. Hey, Earl, what was first, my girl or my guy? Has to be my girl because we didn't accept the faggots until recently. Oh, nothing you can yeah. take can take me away from... Girl was first. Mm -hmm. Earl says girl. From my girl. And then they had to change it to my guy. My guy. You know, but yeah, you, you always got to change the words around. You can't just <laughs> sing it verbatim if it's a chick song. You can't. You can't. Nicole. Unless you're a faggot. Unless you're a faggot. Hey, Nicole. Hi. How are you? Good, Nicole. What's up? Um, I just wanted to say that you guys are getting me in trouble at work right now. Uh-oh. Why? And Why? especially Patrice. Yeah, he'll do that. I am laughing so loud. <laughs> You're an African <laughs> princess, too, I can tell. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I am. The Nubian goddess. Oh, she's <laughs> and, and I she's can so tell right. You're, like, kind of Halle Berry black. Um, no. 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 I'm, like, a little darker than Patrice. Mm, oh, she's wow. color I'm delicious. Yeah. Patrice uh, is pretty dark. Oh, He's not fat. No, <laughs> see, then, sweetie, don't explain to him. That's white people eyes. Fucking, <laughs> <laughs> they always go, oh, that old chocolate motherfucker. We we both know the deal. <laughs> there was a great example of some uh, black racism. Uh, black guys being completely racist in the worst of situations. There was a story I read in the paper this morning. Uh, there was a beating death of a Chinese uh, food delivery guy. Yeah. And the sentences are being handed down. I guess the, the, the trial's going on three guys. Apparently, they just killed him because one guy wanted to be in this gang, and they had Chinese food coming over, and one of the guys said, hey, you want to be in this gang? Kill this Chinese food delivery guy. Poor guy coming to deliver food. And uh, they hit him with a claw hammer on the head with the claw side and just uh, killed him like that. So they ask him, had he ever delivered Chinese food to your house before? And this motherfucker is up on a murder rap, doesn't know anything about sympathy or anything, says, well, I don't want to sound racist, but all them motherfuckers look alike to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe that ain't the time to point that out in court. On a murder rap for claw hammer in this poor guy's head. Uh, dude, baby, don't ever, don't ever make no excuses to white people about about. We I'm know, we know. It. It's like Holly Berry, Berry. No, a little dog in a bit. Well, Patrice is a big old black motherfucker. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm Patrice, what they call brown skin in the black community. No, no, Patrice, yeah. you're sexy. I think you're a very sexy guy, and I will be seeing you at Helium. Yeah, Helium oh, in Philly next yeah, Thursday, yes, I think. A week from tonight? <clears throat> well, I have my tickets next week, yeah. already. Nice. I need some tickets, by the way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised. All right, Nicole. Philly's, uh, Philly's right there with us. Thanks. All right, thanks, guys. That show's going to sell out. Don't get fired. Patrice at Helium in Philly. All right. Let's say hi to uh, Jason in Arizona. Jason. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey. Yeah, I learned today uh, that Patrice has the personality of a pit bull. <laughs> yes, he just attacks. That was wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you guys got to keep him, man. If uh, if uh, Jimmy gets too fancy and doesn't come back, man, you guys got to put him in that third seat. 
Well, Jimmy's going to come back for good uh, like uh, a week from this coming Monday. But th these guys have been so good for us. We're gonna we're gonna find a place for him without a yeah. doubt. All right, we're going to ship gonna Jimmy off on little. Ve Jimmy, we got this great idea. Uh, <laughs> we want you to go to the biggest ball of twine in <laughs> Oklahoma and call us from it. <laughs> and while you're away, Patrice and Bill Burr are going to be here. <laughs> Don't feel bad. It's, it's an, an important mission. We interrupt this program. Oh, what? Ozone sighting of the day. <laughs> wow. Who saw this coming? Sighting. Andrew, what's up? Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey. Happy MLK Day, Patrice. <laughs> Where'd you see your midgets, sir? Uh, I got out of the subway today down by City Hall in Manhattan and handing out those free newspapers. It's a little black midget. Wow, really? What was the newspaper? Oh, uh, that AM New York crap. Oh, the free newspaper they tried? Yeah. To... Yeah, I didn't what? want to take one from his rich Voss fingers, though. Was, was he able to hold more than, like, one at a time yeah, yeah, with yeah, those like, little Vienna sausage fingers? He had a little sack <clears throat> next to him because he didn't want to hold the whole thing at once. I don't know if he could get his whole hand around yeah. it, you know, palm the whole extra, thing. Extra, extra, read <laughs> all about it. <laughs> little freak. All right, guys, keep up the great work. All right, thank you. Meanwhile, back at the show. <laughs> sure are. <laughs> they sure are weeding them out, those midgets. <laughs> You've never heard of the midget sighting of the day? <laughs> I guess it is a good bet. We're, yeah, we're, people we've been on the fence with the we're so jaded. Bet. When people see a midget, they got to call because it's rare these days. Yeah. Uh, when you get to give a girl a, a sonogram and you see a midget, a vacuum's got to come out. <laughs> like years ago, they didn't have that stuff. You couldn't look through that like uh, X-ray vision. But <laughs> oh let's say hi to Mike on Long Island. Mike. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, hey Mike. Um, I just wanted to uh, real quick display what I learned today. Yes. I learned today that my new favorite song is It's Raining Stuff. It's Raining Stuff. I like the song. Clean Hand song, the country clean, song. Clean hand oh, yeah, the Volvo song. That was clean that was Hand. Too. Yeah, I like that whole country bit you guys did. All right, thank you, sir. Oh, Let's go to Brian. <laughs> Brian, what's up? What's going on? Hey, I, I wanted to call and tell you guys that I learned today if I walk in the bathroom to see a chick with small tits, I'm in the right room. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Jerry and Philly, what did you learn on the Opie and Anthony show? Hey, boys, how are you? I learned it's okay to call a black girl a cunt, but not a bitch. Punch there you go. Out. Oh, very good. We learned that today. Mike in Baltimore. Hey, guys, love the show. Patrice, you're the funniest motherfucker on earth. I swear to God. Uh, I yeah, learned I today the that there's a third category of sissy. <laughs> <laughs> category three sissy. Great show today, guys. Great show. Yeah, we had Thanks, fun man. today. Thank you. Let's go to Steven in California. Steven. Hey, I learned that uh, Patrice should stay on this show because that uh, web junk is sucks. Oh shit! <laughs> well, a new web junk you just uh, you just taped it. It'll yeah, be on this weekend. I'm trying to yep. fucking figure it all out. I like the web junk. I really do. What are you gonna do? Look for Patrice on VH1. He's doing web junk 20 every uh, every week. Uh -huh. That's corporate. Corporate let's, selling off. Let's go to Rob on Long Island. You Rob bought in. Hey, sell out. Going on, guys? Yeah, I learned that a life lesson and a wrinkle come at an expensive price. Punching out. I had no idea you know what he was uh, discussing. I, I let me. All right, John, to you. I learned that I'm a country singer, you idiot. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, uh, Victor. Dear. Dear. <laughs> Dear.